Good afternoon and welcome everybody to HPCSE, especially Professor Arvind Kumar, our uh, guest of honor today, and uh, Professor um, Jairam Chengalu, Director TIFR, Dr. Anil Kakodkar, former uh, AEC Chairman, Professor Anand Bhattacharya, Director uh, HBCSE, and all our friends. It's lovely to see so many of our uh, friends and colleagues and ex-colleagues. Uh, of course, Arvind Kumar's name always brings in people, so <laughs> no wonder. And uh, so we will begin this special session of the Symposium on Physics Education, which is uh, dedicated to the celebration of uh, Professor Arvind Kumar's life and career on the occasion of his turning 80, which he did about a month ago. And uh, to start the proceedings, I uh, would invite our Center Director, Professor Arnab Bhattacharya, to come and, uh, on stage and welcome the audience. Good afternoon. Wake up, wake up. Uh, <laughs> it's a privilege to stand here, and it's an absolute delight and honor to welcome you all to this wonderful event that we're going to have. It's a real you know, pleasure that we can honor the legacy of Professor Arvind Kumar to building this institution, to his role in the development of HPCSE over the last 50 years in setting up what it is right now. It's also great, I'm delighted to see that there are so many colleagues, old and new, who have come together just in the lunch break when people were coming in. It's nice to see that you know, an event like this provides the opportunity for people who otherwise have probably not met each other after the pandemic to really come here, get together. It feels really nice that we are catalyzing, this event is catalyzing, bringing together people. It's very difficult to describe the achievements and the legacy of Professor Arvind Kumar in a sentence, in brief. Anvesh will be doing the honors in a bit. But, you know, a person whose knowledge of physics is absolutely impeccable, a passionate teacher whose classes, you know, the old study circles for physics, etc., are legendary. A person who led, whose visionary leadership of the center, the architect of the Olympiad program for the country in the sciences, to have the foresight to set up NIUS, the Initiative for Undergraduate Science, which we realize today is so much more important than what we may have realized over all these years as the new education policy talks about universities having undergraduate educations uh, you know, in, in, integrated into them. So the, to have the foresight for that, I think it's amazing. And the combination of all of this, someone who managed very deftly all the difficulties of you know, leading an institution uh, with diplomacy, with tact, with whatever, and got things done is Professor Arvind Kumar AK. And I really refuse to believe that number 80. Let me tell you why. I know his birthday was sometime, Anvesh said, about a month back. But on the 9th of November, AK turned 25 years younger. And this I saw for myself. This is the day the NCRT called many of us uh, to say that, okay, now, you know, the next generation of textbooks, etc., have to be written. We are going to have a meeting. And I never saw anybody so excited about this and so energetic as AK. You know, he decided, no, of course, we have to do this. This is such a great opportunity. I'm going to be there. Somebody who's 80? No, not at all. AK, you have many, many, many years of great productivity and success ahead of you. And today, let's join in celebrating that. It's a celebration, folks. You know, thoda sa josh dikhao. Smile, be happy, and all the best. Over to you. Thank you, Arnab. I will uh, now request uh, Professor Jairam Chengalur and uh, Professor Savita Ladge, uh, Dean HBCSE, to please come on stage, and Professor Arvind Kumar, if you can come on stage uh, for a few minutes to, to greet Professor Arvind Kumar on this special occasion.
that with deep gratitude and appreciation for your pioneering and sustained contributions to science education and visionary leadership of the center. Please. Okay, so uh, of course it's uh, AK's birthday, not today, but a month ago, so uh, there has to be some small gift, a very small uh, token of our appreciation on behalf of HBCSE, and to give that to AK, I will uh, invite uh, some of our uh, colleagues who are presently working uh, at HBCSE and also uh, with whom AK shared a, a long time at HBCSE. So uh, please uh, come on stage, Sumana. Gajanan, Sandhya, Rasam, please, uh, do, we, do we have everybody? Just a minute. <coughs> okay. Sorry, I, I'm just <laughs> getting the list out. Uh, Yes, uh, Mahesh, Mahesh Bamne, N.D. Deshmukh, Shirish Pathare, Anupama, Meena, okay, uh, is uh, Pednekar here? No. Shanoi? Uh, yeah. Shweta and Manoj, you have to come out of there. <laughs> Lale? Yeah, so uh, of course, I mean, uh, AK, as you all know, that uh, lives a very frugal life. He doesn't have many needs, etc., but he loves to read books. So we thought it would be a good idea to give him a couple of books. So please gather together, please. Uh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yes. <laughs> Now you can go back. Yes. We'll call you again. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll call you again. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so we'll start with a few things now, and um, we will take a break at around four o'clock because I expect this session to be long because there are many people who have expressed a desire to speak on this occasion. So. Uh, we will take a short tea break for about 20 minutes at around 4 o'clock. Uh, but before that, uh, Pritesh, if you can come on stage. So uh, I must mention that we have uh, some uh, friends and colleagues, ex-colleagues of AK who are joining online. So we are uh, on Zoom as well. So it might take a few minutes time every time to adjust these things. Yeah. Can you hide it, please? Or it's OK. Yeah. Thank you. OK. So as, oops. as as uh, Arnab said, that it is very difficult to, uh, to describe AK's contribution to this center, to TIFR, uh, the larger institute, and to the country in general uh, in, a, in a brief manner. Nevertheless, I will give it a try, and I will just uh, take you through uh, some of the most uh, important aspects of his life and career. Uh, I don't know, I'm sure I will not be able to do justice 
because uh, I, I mean, there are many others in the audience who have known him for much, much longer. But uh, uh, still, let's uh, uh, give it a try. So yeah, so I uh, titled this uh, Arvind Kumar, A Celebration of Life and a Life to Celebrate, because I think uh, looking at his life, you can see how he really gets uh, or takes the best of life. And, and that's his motto. He is always I mean, alive and doing something. And, and that's, that's a celebration of life. OK. Yeah, I'm trying this. Yeah. OK. So Arvind Kumar was born on 15th October 1943 in Delhi. And he did his initial school education in a vernacular school um, in, in Hindi medium in Old Delhi. He won the then prestigious All India Entrance Scholarship in 1960 for college education and went on to do his BSc Honours in Physics uh, in 1963 from Hansraj College, Delhi University. And he joined the Atomic Energy Establishment, as it was called at that time, time training school 1963 to 1964 as a physics trainee. And later, uh, one year later, joined the uh, theory group at TIFR. This picture is uh, kindly provided by uh, Kravinod Sani. And even he doesn't know exactly when it was taken. I asked AK, even he doesn't remember. But it must be somewhere in the 1960s when he was just a young student. Yeah, you still have it, yes. Maybe we can have the lights off here, please. So uh, he completed his PhD in TIFR, uh, from TIFR in 1969 in theoretical particle physics. His guide was Professor Virendra Singh, uh, who later became the director of TIFR. And uh, he acknowledges that his overall mentor was Professor B.M. Udgaonkar, uh, who was then the head of the theory group, and who later played a pivotal role in the founding of HBCSE. And uh, then after his PhD, he went on to do his postdoctoral work at CERN, Geneva, from 1969 to 1970, and then the University of London, uh, Westfield College, uh, for two years more, 1970 to 71. So uh, this picture, uh, it's taken in 1967, must be during his PhD years. I'll just enlarge the picture. And uh, I don't know whether you can spot AK here, but he is here, third. This is AK. This picture has been kindly provided by uh, Oindrila Rai Choudhury from uh, TIFR Archives. There is one more person in this room who is in this picture. Uh, I don't know whether he remembers. Uh, this is Professor Abbas Rangwala. Uh, <laughs> these I know because these are in the, in the caption of the picture. And uh, this is uh, Yachiri Nambu. And this is B.M. Udgaonkar, among many other uh, people. OK, uh, let's go ahead. So uh, during his uh, postdoc period at Westfield College, he gave a short lecture course on a topic in particle theory, uh, the iconal approximation. And this, he says, was a turning point, because this is the first time that he had an experience of teaching. And he decided on a career involving teaching theoretical physics. So this was one uh, turning point in his life. And this picture is uh, taken in Europe, as you can Im easily imagine. We usually don't imagine AK like this, leaning against a car and all that. So, so this is a very interesting picture. And this is, of course, his, his wife. Uh, um, and he was uh, newly married at that time. And uh, then he came back to India. And from 1971 to 1983, he was at the Mumbai University. At that time, I think it was called University of Mumbai and uh, University Department of Physics, or UDP, as uh, they call it. And there he taught nearly every, uh, every core course uh, in, in theoretical physics uh, at MSc physics and uh, several domains beyond his specialization of particle physics. And as you shall see that this has been the hallmark of AK's career, the breadth of, of uh, things that he has done. And uh, uh, he, uh, during this time, he also supervised two students in PhD in two unrelated areas. One is quantum black hole physics. Uh, we are all familiar with the name, uh, Professor Bala Ayer, who has also joined online. And I'm sure uh, he's listening to this. And uh, another one on atomic and uh, optical physics. And the student was uh, Dr. Marina D'Souza, who is presently in the US. And during this time, he wrote uh, many teaching materials in, in, for the, at the BSc level. And if you look at his publication record, you realize that he wrote numerous expository science articles in IAPT Bulletin and Science Today, including the Einstein centenary year uh, in 1979, uh, a commemorative article on that occasion. 
He also devised a 30-minute radio program uh, for All India Radio called A Grain of Sand in 1981. And uh, he regards this period, the UDP period, as uh, foundational to his later academic career. Uh, and uh, many things started from here, as we shall see. And he came to HBCC in 1984. That was the HBCC old campus. And he started this Homi Bhabha uh, uh, study circle in physics, which ran for a staggering here you can see 14 years and later again he's, he did it for two years, so for 16 years without break. Every, every uh, Saturday, right? Every Sunday. Thursday. Thursday and Sundays, yes. So many of you have attended that and without fail uh, uh, this ran for so many years and he taught uh, everything uh, in the undergraduate uh, and postgraduate level. And uh, these were weekly sessions uh, for BSc students. And in this, he was assisted by uh, Professor H.C. Pradhan, who is also there, and uh, Professor Shrish Barve. He was also due to come. I don't know whether he has come. Oh, yes, OK. Uh, so, so they were uh, assisting him. And uh, this time, he started PhD supervision in a new area. This was perhaps the, his first uh, foray into uh, educational research on mathematical modeling of educational processes uh, by Manjusha Deshpande. Uh, she is also perhaps in the audience. She is she was due to come, um, and uh, now one very important thing that that happened in, during this time is the NCRT class 11 and 12 physics textbooks were written, and uh, Professor Arvind Kumar was a key member of the team that wrote. There are others also. Professor Rajaram Nitananda is uh, is here, but uh, and especially for the teachers who use these NCRT textbooks. Uh, so these are, of course, the first, uh, the older edition, but in the later editions, much of it has remained the same with some uh, uh, reorientation uh, and some, some editing, but the core part has remained the same. And AK's biggest contribution to this, perhaps, apart from writing, was that he devised about 1,000 new exercises. All the exercises in the NCRT class 11, 12 textbooks were written by, were devised, almost all of them were devised by Professor Avin Kumar, and we are still using them. And this is perhaps very little known. And I asked you people a few days ago, some people that you know who uh, we were discussing about the NCRT problems. And we asked that you know who, who devised them. And I, I told you that I will tell you two days later. So uh, this is a novel feature which has survived all the later editions. Even in today's editions, these uh, problems are there. He devised another 30-minute radio program for AIR uh, called Compliments to Complementarity on Niels Bohr during this time. And he says that all this, in a sense, was based on his earlier teaching experience at, uh, at the university. And uh, then from that point onwards, from 1984 onwards, when he came here, uh, he was totally immersed in HBCSE's work, uh, which, of which equity was a primary pillar. And he engaged deeply in the uh, field visits to uh, rural areas, along with uh, V.G. Kulkarni, who was at that time the director of HBCSE, Professor Pradhan, Professor Agarkar, Professor Gambhir, and many other colleagues. Uh, this is perhaps some, so again, all these pictures, we really don't have the exact dates or the exact context always. So it uh, looks like uh, from uh, that period. And uh, he had many field visits uh, in the program led by uh, uh, Professor S.C. Agarkar. And he says that this removed his misconception that he had the school science education is just a dilute version of higher science education. He realized that it is a whole new ball game and it has to be treated differently. And uh, during this time, he also um, got involved in the remedial secondary mathematics parts so one to four with uh, uh, Agarkar and R.M. Bhagwat and H.C. Pradhan. And he also wrote materials in Marathi based on his intuition and experience at that time. Uh, and uh, he was a resource person in numerous nurture and orientation programs throughout. So, uh, I mean, uh, throughout his career, he has been uh, doing teaching and writing all the time and in multiple languages. Uh, <coughs> in research and development activities uh, during his HBCC years from 1992 to 2008, this started a little before coming to HBCC. So he turned to the professional field of physics education research, which uh, he is still involved in. And uh, one of the earlier works was his uh, PR work on student conceptions in Galilean relativity with uh, uh, Jayashri Ramdash and Shrish Barve. And he also wrote co-curricular materials in physics at the at beginning college level with uh, Shrish Barve. The, uh, many of you are familiar with the books, How and Why in Physics, the three volumes, wonderful books, if you have not seen them. 
Uh, and he extended his intellectual interest at this time. And coming from a core physics background, he went on to give courses uh, for PhD students and others at HBCC on learning theories, great educationists, cognitive development, and later philosophy of science. So uh, he shifted gears very quickly. And uh, then he became center director in 1994, and he retired as center director in 2008, uh, a 14-year tenure during which uh, many things uh, happened at HBCSC. Uh, I'll not have time to go through the details of all. I'll just mention some of the major initiatives that he uh, took upon himself and in which he was assisted by his numerous colleagues who took leading roles at HBCSC. Among them, the foundation curriculum, uh, along with Professor Chitra Natarajan and Sukra Chunawala. The Homi Bhabha curriculum in primary science with Jai Sri Ram Das and Josna Vijapurkar. The Homi Bhabha curriculum in primary mathematics led by K. Subramaniam. The collaborative program with uh, Atomic Energy Education Society, uh, Society. Then the tribal education project led by uh, Dr. S. C. Agarkar, and who is here in this picture, for those of you, and this is Professor Gambhir. Here we have, I, I hope you know, recognize Professor Mayang Vaiya, who is here in the audience, looks very different now. And this is P.R. Fadnavis, uh, our previous administrative officer. And uh, also the Portable Science and Mathematics Laboratory, along with uh, V.G. Gambhir, K. Subramaniam, and Shweta Naik. He also uh, um, was one of the main persons behind this History of Science uh, exhibition, which is a wonderful exhibition on History of Science. Uh, temporarily is undergoing renovation and it will be reinstalled. It is uh, edited by G. Nagarjun and Prasa Arvind Kumar. And uh, uh, this is... This is how the exhibition looked at this time. This is Professor Arun Grover, Sudha Murthy, uh, having a look at it. And uh, the other important exhibition uh, which was created at that time was the Gender and Science Exhibition by Sugra Chunawala, which is in uh, uh, one of the adjoining rooms here. So this is the Professor Shobha Bhattacharya inaugurating that here. And uh, also uh, the uh, biennial uh, international conference on STEM research called Epistemy was started uh, uh, during his time. Uh, I don't know whether this is a picture from Epistemi, but uh, this is uh, many of his colleagues, some of, all of whom are almost present here in the audience today. Uh, so one of the major things uh, uh, during his tenure at, uh, at HBCSE, uh, which uh, changed uh, to a great deal the nature of work done at HBCSE and also put HBCSE very much in the public eye, was the Olympiad program, which uh, which is a very big program and which, uh, as you know, still continues today uh, with great success. And uh, Professor Vijay Singh talked about the origins of the Olympiad program in his talk earlier today. And so this started from 1997, uh, the Science Olympiad uh, program in with the international participation in the for, uh, Physics Olympiad in 1998. And quickly, in 1990, uh, from 1999, we started participating in the Chemistry Olympiad, from 2000 in the Biology Olympiad, the Astronomy Olympiad also started in, uh, we participating in 1999, and later the Junior Science Olympiad also, uh, we participated from 2007, and HBCC was made the nodal center of the country in mathematics and sciences. So this put HBCC on a very important uh, national role. And uh, we also hosted the International Olympiads in Chemistry, Astronomy, and Biology during his tenure. So the, these are some pictures from ICH of the Chemistry Olympiad. This is from IBO, I think, the previous year where he's receiving the IBO, whatever it is uh, which has to be carried. This is the IBO team the previous year. This is the IAO 2006. Uh, the other major uh, program that he uh, initiated at HBCSE is the National Initiative on Undergraduate Science, NIUS, from 2004. And this, I think it would be fair to say that it was co almost completely AK's brainchild. He conceived of it, he wrote the entire proposal and got it through uh, DAE approval and all that. Of course, he was helped by, by other colleagues, uh, but uh, this originated from him. And uh, this extended HBCSE's domain of work from school education or high school education into undergraduate education. And uh, this was, again, a game-changing affair because it also gave us uh, two new buildings, which we are still using, uh, including a very big hostel where many of you are staying. And without these, many of HBCC's programs that are being held today would have been impossible. And uh, so, so that was, again, a very big uh, contribution. Yeah, here also there are, I think, uh, Dr. Satyamurti, who has joined online, I think he is here, and uh, some others are also here. So what happened was that these major programs elevated the institutional status of HBCSC within TIFR and, and outside. And from a constituent unit of TIFR, HBCSC became a national center of TIFR at par with other national centers of TIFR uh, in terms of the institutional structure. 
And when a separate sub when a TFR became a deemed university, at that time a separate subject board on science education was formed. And so all this had uh, uh, was um, was led by uh, uh, happened under Professor Arvind Kumar's leadership, and he had a key role to play in this. Of course, most of you know, but for the others, this is Professor S. S. Jha, uh, the then director of TFR. Uh, and also during this time, the sub substantial upgradation of HBCC infrastructure, and four new buildings were added. The uh, two hostels, what we today call the, uh, the old hostel, at that time it was called the Olympiad Hostel, and then the NIUS Hostel, and the two office buildings, the Olympiad and the NIUS. So this allowed HBCC to grow in many directions in, uh, uh, with new labs and, and other facilities. So this was a huge contribution. And on the national scale, HBCC came to be regarded as a premier place in the country for R&D and orientation activity in science education at school and uh, colleges. Uh, and he also, uh, in recognition of his contributions to all, to all these uh, efforts, he was also the author of the co-author of several national reports, very important national reports related to science education. He was a member of the National Steering Committee for the National uh, um, uh, Curriculum Framework 2005. And he chaired the focus group on, uh, on teaching science. Yeah, so this is, I think, uh, then Education Minister uh, Murli Munahar Joshi visiting HBCSE. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Chidambaram, the AEC chairman, Professor Jha here. And this is JJ Bhava, who was the chair of the TFR Council that time. So uh, now AK retired as uh, HBCC director in 2008. But uh, his retirement, if anything, just increased his activities mainly into because he was now free from uh, uh, administration. So he plunged uh, absolutely, I mean, <laughs> with full force into academics again, and he, uh, which was all the time alive, as you saw. He did a lot of academic work even as director, but now he had even more time. And he played a key academic uh, role in the initial phase of UMDA CBS, Mumbai in the setting up of that. Uh, Amiya and Sangeeta are here. Uh, they know the, all this history. And Nizer Bhuvneshwar. Uh, so the first entrance test, the NEST, and then the curriculum development, AK had a very, very significant contribution in those. And he started teaching regularly at CBS, of course, for many years, for, from 2008 to 2020. He taught uh, several courses at CBS. And of course, he remained involved and uh, engaged with uh, the research activities in physics education at HBCC, which continues till date. And uh, among the major works uh, after retirement, uh, the, he had a student, Atanu Abandapadhyay, who completed a very nice PhD on cognitive studies in relativity. And this was perhaps the first detailed study in the world on student pitfalls in the basic themes of general relativity. This was done in 2011. Uh, along with Professor Savita Largay, he uh, wrote a book on chemical thermodynamics, which is available on our website. A very nice book, especially for uh, teachers who are present here. You can uh, consult this book. Uh, uh, the, uh, and currently, he is also involved in PR in content-specific epistemology uh, of physics and its disciplinary practices, along with uh, Mashud and myself. So if you look at his career and his uh, range of work, the first thing you notice is that the wide range of research uh, from physics to PR. So in his initial papers uh, during his student and postdoc days were in quantum field theory and uh, black holes and things like that. During these are the 1970s and the 80s and the 90s. And you can see after coming to HBCC, and so he, he is writing in, in Galilean relativity for frames of reference as alternative conceptions. This is with Jayashri Namdas. And uh, at the same time, parallelly doing uh, core physics also. This is with Vikram Atle. And uh, then more and more into physics education research. So he covered a wide range of, uh, of research in his entire career. This is also evident in his writings from the school to the UG level. Uh, in every level, he has written books and in multiple languages. He has written in English, he has written in Hindi, he has written in Marathi. So that's, again, a, a very wide range. And various kinds of books on various topics, from basic textbooks to how and why, to, to fractals and, and whatnot. He has received many awards and recognitions. Among them, uh, the Indian Nuclear Society's Science Communication Award in 2003, the Godavari Gora Award in the category of GAN from Kusum, uh, uh, Kusumagraj uh, Pratishthan Maharashtra in uh, 2006, the Tuas Regional Prize in School Curriculum and Materials Development, the National Award for Science Popularization Among Children by the National Council for Science and Technology Communication of the Government of India. This was an award for HBCC, which happened under his directorship in 1999. 
He's a fellow of the National Academy of Sciences, and uh, he also received the uh, INSA Teacher Award in 2014, and the Government of India felicitated him with the Padma Shri Award in 2010 for his contributions to science education. So uh, I'll just finish with some uh, pictures. Uh, so this is a picture, I think, uh, where, I mean, uh, so from the left, I mean, many uh, uh, of our past HBCSE uh, colleagues are, are here, and uh, uh, even, I think, uh, yeah, so I'll not name all of them, but this is, I think, uh, Mr. Raul, this is Professor Jha, this is Professor Chitre, Professor Narlikar, and this person, I'm sorry, I can't uh, really recognize, this is uh, uh, V.G. Kulkarni. And uh, this is Kadam, I think, uh, our previous driver, and uh, others, I, no, sorry, this is Joshi, and this is Kadam. Anyway, and this is, of course, Avin Kumar, if you don't recognize him. He looked <laughs> a bit different at that time. <laughs> and and uh, this is uh, Mr. Kurgaonkar, this is Mr. Mastakar. And uh, this is, again, again some of the people in the audience. Uh, Professor Rajaram Nittananda is here, Professor Swapan Ghosh is here, Abbas Rangwala. And Mukunda, they are all here in this uh, refresher course on quantum mechanics in 2014. Some more pictures. This is uh, uh, Professor Virendra Singh, who was the director of uh, TIFR and also AK's PhD guide. This is JJ Bhava, uh, uh, the then uh, chair of the TIFR council, AK, and this is uh, Professor Viji Kulkarni. This is Yashpal, of course, Professor Yashpal, the Shobha Bhattacharya, and Musan Sir Barma, who were the, the directors of TIFR. Yeah, this uh, slide I wanted to show you because this is, of course, uh, J.V. Narlikar. And here you can't read it, but there are two letters. This first one coming from, so the Narlikar was that time the director of Ayuka, and he is writing to AK. Under official letterheads, one director to writing to another. Usually this is about some official matters or some administrative matters. But he's asking a question. He's saying that he has, he's looking for the answer to the question, why is the color of tire black? That's the question that is put in this letter. And here AK is replying again uh, to, to Narlikar with his explanation, which he acknowledges uh, uh, Professor Chitra Natarajan, who has given this. And AK, of course, in his usual style, uh, says, I will read it out. He says that I am aware that the answer does not go into the basic organic or structural chemistry of why or how the carbon black uh, uh, does when, uh, of what, is, what it is known to do uh, empirically. I have meanwhile consulted uh, some organic chemistry uh, friends of mine uh, for this kind of explanation and would pass it on to you if I get one. So very unusual exchange between two directors, but th those are the ages. I don't know whether today's directors also exchange uh, such things on uh, on official letters. So anyway, so so this is uh, again, I mean, uh, this is of course Professor uh, B. M. Udgaonkar, who was uh, one of the key persons behind HBCSE. Uh, Dr. Kakotkar is here. Uh, here, of course, uh, Professor Rangwala, and here some of his uh, colleagues, like, uh, I think Professor Sudhir Panse is here, and others who are uh, there in some conference, I believe. Yeah, some more pictures uh, of him teaching or giving lectures. This is uh, of, uh, in, with HBCSE colleagues. Uh, I'm sure I don't have to identify these people for, the, for our HBCSE friends, so these are uh, various friends. Again, very unusual picture of AK. Uh, this is, I think, in some conference, in some <laughs> party. Huh? Epistemi Goa. Yeah. So, so Goa, Goa brings you different. I mean, brings out different personalities, right? So, so you can see also AK <laughs> dancing or uh, at least supporting the dance. Yeah. This, I think, is the transition of the directorship from AK to uh, HCP in the director's office, surrounded by many colleagues from HBCC. And. Uh, yeah, so here again, Manoj, who is behind there, Shanoi, and then here's, here's Gajanan, here's Meena, Sumana, Smita, and Sandhya. Uh, <laughs> yeah, some old pictures. Yeah, so uh, if, if we look at AK's whole career, I think uh, the, what strikes me most is the depth and the breadth of, of his work. In research, he has gone from core physics to physics education research. I mean, various and within core physics also a, a breadth of ideas. He has been teaching continuously, nearly 50 years of teaching experience at the university, at, at uh, uh, CBS, and at various uh, countless programs at HBCSC. The Homi Baba Study Circle, which has benefited countless students in, in uh, uh, Bombay and around, for, for, and it ran it for 17 years. And he has taught in diverse settings. It's not just in institutional settings. He has gone to rural areas. He has gone to semi-urban areas and given many lectures. 
And he has been writing prolifically. He has, uh, he has written so many research papers. He has written pedagogic articles and books, popular science books, etc. And of course, perhaps the most, uh, one of the most important thing is the institution building and the national impact that he has, uh, he has left in, uh, in the whole scene. So he has a transformative leadership of HBCSE for 14 years, which uh, brought in so many new things to HBCSE and made HBCSE what it is today. He had a big uh, contribution to that. And he helped set up the graduate school in science education. Then the Olympiads in the NIOS have already talked about the authorship of the NCRT physics textbook, which has a very big national impact. Uh, so many students have benefited from, uh, from the, these textbooks. And of course, the contributions to KVPOI, C, uh, CBS, and NISER since inception. So, so that's what I, I just tried to summarize uh, his work uh, in a few slides. So it's, uh, one can go on and on. But I will stop here and uh, let others do the talking. Before that, uh, thanks for uh, the pictures which came from uh, these people. And so again, I mean, I would end uh, with this thing that he is, is a celebration of life, and it's indeed a life to celebrate. So uh, before I, I call on the others, I will just, yeah. So I will just, so the others have four minutes. I will not take four minutes, but I will, <laughs> I will take a few minutes because I am perhaps one of the people in this room who has the least overlap or, or, or uh, uh, overlap with AK or working experience. But because I was actually, what I found out recently was that I was the last permanent member that uh, was recruited under his directorship. So, so I officially have the, have the least amount of overlap uh, officially with you. But I have been working with him uh, since then. Uh, after his retirement. And right now, we work very closely together for several years. And I'm sure the others will paint a much better picture uh, than I can. But uh, I'll just say one or two things that strikes me whenever uh, we talk, uh, uh, I have my interactions with Eki. The first thing that comes across is the extreme dedication to anything that he does. Anything. And that can be, I mean, writing a paper, that can be uh, just writing some too few lines or something. He doesn't like procrastination, and that's one of the things where we have great differences. <laughs> and, and, but, but AK is something, so he will send, OK, I will send you. And by the time I reach from here to my home at TIFR, it has come. He has already finished it. And uh, this kind of dedication, and when he starts, so you can see that the wide range of things he has done. So obviously, uh, he is I mean, doing a lot of things. But one thing that I noticed he, is that he doesn't do too many things at the same time. He just starts one thing and he finishes it. And he works tirelessly behind it all the time till it is finished. And once that is done, he immediately jumps to the next one and finishes that. And that's his working style. And, and he says that also. Now I will completely, I will not look at anything else. I will just do that. And doing this means, so his usual, uh, sorry, this is a little personal, but if I may share. So he will send you a WhatsApp message at 1.45 in the night because he's still working. So his working hours are, I think, typically from 11 o'clock in the morning till 2 o'clock in the night. And I've tried to advise him time and again that perhaps this is not so good at your age. But he says, no, no, I have busted that myth that uh, early to bed, early to rise makes a man <laughs> healthy, wealthy, and wise. So, and, I, and one can see it, <laughs> of course, in practice. So, so he's a tireless worker. That's the first thing that, that uh, comes across. I mean, any work, he will just work tirelessly till it's finished. And he doesn't wait for the others to contribute or anything. The other thing is the self-effacing nature. Although he does so much work, he never puts himself in front. Uh, uh, during the uh, physics Olympiad uh, that we hosted here, we requested him to be in the academic committee, if possible, to chair it, and he declined. But he said, but I, whatever physics feedback you want, I, I will give you. You just bring the questions to me, and I will give you feedback. But he, on one condition only, you cannot put my name anywhere. You, nobody must know, and I, I don't want my name anywhere. But I will give you the feedback, and that's exactly what he did. He gave very detailed feedback on all the questions uh, that we showed him. So uh, that's the kind of uh, work that he, uh, that he does. And uh, the other uh, thing that I will uh, like to say is he's extremely persuasive. So if you have an argument with AK about anything, you're sure from the beginning that you'll finally lose it. because. <laughs> Because you say something, and he says something, and you get the feeling that you are winning this argument. 
and at some point AK out of the hat will say something so in, incontrovertible that the argument cannot go any further. And, and, and this we have seen him uh, in his capacity as director also and even now in various arguments on politics, on sports, on anything. Uh, he will somehow find some argument that will, <laughs> that will win the argument. He is very persuasive and, uh, the, and of course in uh, all that I said it must have been clear that he knows how to take people along and to work with so many different people. I mean from many esteemed colleagues who are sitting here to down to much younger people like me and who have very different working styles than him sorry for that <laughs> but uh, but but he doesn't he manages to work with everybody that's what I have uh, have found out that there's nobody who cannot work with Iki I mean they uh, he, he has that capacity to take people along so uh, thank you Iki for everything and for the guide uh, guidance and the mentorship that you have given all of us and especially to me personally and wish you a very happy healthy and productive life thank you So uh, now uh, what we'll do is that uh, there are many people here who uh, would like to uh, say things about Prasavin Kumar. So uh, I will. Uh, I have a list, and there are many people already on the list. And then I have a second list of people who have said that, if possible, I also want to say something. So we'll see. So one request that I have is that because there are at least 30 people to speak, so I request every speaker to limit your contribution to a less than four minutes, because that's already two hours, not counting the transition and the breaks. So uh, so f first, I would uh, like to invite on stage Dr. Anil Kakodkar, who has been, of course, uh, AK's batchmate from the training school, if I am not wrong, and uh, a long-term colleague. Yes. Well, first of all, Dr. Arvind Kumar, compliments, and let's say that uh, although it is not your official birthday today, but many happy returns of the day. There are many things we share together, but one thing which I had not recognized or realized so far is that we also share the initials which are so common. <laughs> Because I am used to imagining if somebody writes AK, it is me. <laughs> and then, <laughs> so today, no, is another reality dawned on me. But you are right, we are batchmates. But if I had to uh, recount the list of things we share, uh, he, of course, as the biodata said, uh, he studied in Delhi. I studied in Madhya Pradesh, but both we studied outside Maharashtra. Uh, Dr. Arvind Kumar, uh, we worked uh, particularly when he was the center director here. Uh, there are plenty of occasions to talk. Uh, this program which he initiated, uh, call it NIUS, later even uh, the CEBS, and more importantly when it came to devising the national entrance test for admissions, uh, both at uh, uh, NICER as well as CEBS, uh, we are all uh, very singularly dependent on uh, Dr. Arvind Kumar and the Homiwabha Center. Dr. Pradhan also is uh, is here. Uh, so uh, there are many things I can go on, but uh, I would save a few minutes out of the four minutes limit that you have put. Uh, but I have come here only to express my gratitude. Uh, uh, express respects to a dear friend and wish him all the well in years to come. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Thank you, Dr. Kakodkar. Yeah, sorry about the time limit, but uh, yeah, you finished much less than four minutes. But yeah, so um, so we have uh, several people on online. Are those people already there, or uh, or will? Okay, we'll come back to that. So maybe uh, uh, Professor Rajaram Nitanand. So, uh, Professor Arvind Kumar <laughs> entered my frame of reference uh, through the black hole work that you heard about, through my colleague Bala here. You will hear from Bala separately. So, I just want to say uh, it's a little vicarious excitement for us. It's a bit like seeing Rohit Sharma hit a six. You didn't hit it, but you feel somehow that apna admi ne kiya hai. So, anyway. Uh, then, of course, the next thing I heard is that he had moved into science education. Of course, you've seen the whole trajectory. Uh, so I had a theory about it that, of course, you know, he was obviously doing very well in this area, but uh, from what I know, uh, maybe the kind of things that we do did not satisfy his philosophical inclinations and also uh, urge to be useful, practical. And I think he's found a calling in which both these have been amply fulfilled. So our real overlap was in this uh, NCRT textbook uh, that you heard about, the early, early work in the late 80s, early 90s. So I'll let you behind the scenes here. I think Professor Vijay Bede, if I'm not mistaken, decided to assemble a team. I think of the team as having N minus one very eminent physicists. Some of them were from Bangalore, so they wrote me in also. So that became N. And then to keep them all in check, to ground them, or ground this high voltage group, uh, Professor Arvind Kumar was there. So we debated everything, but he, became our critic, our conscience, uh, in spite of which, of course, you know, uh, such a group will head in many directions. Anyway, the book was put together. We had a lot of feedback from teachers. Uh, I have to say it had mixed reviews. I, I did go to uh, the house of one of my TIFR colleagues, and he very proudly introduced me to his daughter, saying he wrote the wave optics chapter, and she didn't talk to me after that. <laughs> <laughs> but the one thing which has got fantastic reviews, and we heard about that, is the uh, problem set. And, and the reason is he, you know, each of us thought we will devise problems for our own chapter. And somewhere at some point we realized that it had all been done, okay? So that's as far as the uh, textbook was concerned. And of course we again were together in the later edition. In the first edition I think we were the babies of the team and then in the later edition we were the sort of gray senior people in the team, but never mind. Lots of further overlap. Uh, as my t-shirt tells you, I joined uh, TIFR, the nuclear family, if you like. And uh, then, you know, uh, NCRA being just around the corner, I, I found, as someone said he's very persuasive, <laughs> found myself being sucked into things like Olympiad program. So let me, let me just cut it short here and say, Arvind, uh, thanks so much for everything that I've learned from you. I mean, the rigor with which you have approached teaching and anything, setting a question paper and so on. And thanks also for sort of sucking me into this very vibrant community. And I've learned a lot from all of them. Thank you, Professor Nitananda. And uh, now we'll have uh, someone uh, who has joined online, Professor Bala Ayer, who was uh, AK's PhD student. Uh, so just give Hello, us a minute. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, dear Arvind. I thank the organizers for the kind invitation to be part of the celebration of a wonderful and long career. Wish I could be there in person to recall these memories and convey warm regards to you from me and Suman on your 80th birthday. Thank you for your insights in physics, molding our values towards it, and for being a role model of academic integrity, so deceptively simple yet so challenging to emulate. I did my MSA in UDP during 74 to 76. I still recall the pleasure and enlightenment I experienced from your lectures on beta decay or Sunday lectures on mathematical physics from Denary or nuclear physics from Desalit and Freshback. I worked with Arvind Kumar for my PhD during 76 to 79 on issues of Dirac field theory in current and Rindler space time. How did it all begin? My personal interaction with AK began during MSc part 2 when AK fellow student Roy 
and i jointly read through derek lorden's book on tensor calculus and general relativity sometime later ak mentioned he would be willing to take me as a phd student if i was interested ak's research career was earlier in particle physics and i was his first phd student at udp interested in general relativity he then took me to the library and we browsed through physics reports he picked two of them one on solitons by rajaraman and another on quantum field theory in curved space time by bryce dewitt we went over both of them and while reading through the literature cited in the latter found a paper in physical b by larry ford on quantization of the scalar field in the curved background arvind then turned to me and posed what would happen if you had a dirac equation in such a background and investigating this became my baby step into research in its treatment i found we used almost every technique that ak had taught us in his different courses when we had a perturbative treatment the full problem could not be solved since it required the separability of dirac equation in the curve background <coughs> we were not up to it however there was a twist in the tale after completion of this work arvind was invited to tfr to talk about this and at the end of the talk lk pandit told us that in the proceedings of royal society on display chandrashekhar had separated the dirac equation in the curve background we were excited but realized that the separation was done using the newman penrose formalism that we were not familiar with to bridge the gap we worked through weinberg's book on general relativity and it took us almost a year to translate the newman penrose treatment to the standard dirac form and use it in my thesis this simple quantum mechanical problem led to issues related to super radiance and hawking radiation for curved black holes in chandra's book on mathematical theory of black holes it came out during my phd and it was memorable to find a minor reference to the paper by me and arvin in that magnum opus it was so versatile that as has been mentioned that after me he guided marina on a very different area related to two photon states and later on moved to research in physics pedagogy arvin used to have his celebrated weekend physics study circle for undergrad and it was the role model for my involvement in the reap activity in the bangalore planetarium over the weekends from watching arvin in action whether in teaching as editor of the cosmic bulletin introducing atomic structure of matter by a series of queries discussing herman hesse's glass bead game devising problems for the ncert textbook or laying the road map for participation in science olympiads i am proud that if anything is worth doing it is worth doing well and importantly in time and would always require giving up some other thing that you were involved in thanks again arvin with fond memories and warm regards and best wishes for good health and active intellectual life in the coming years thank you very much thank you prasa balayer we'll move on to the uh, next speaker uh, prasa hc pradhan who was a uh, center director after uh, prasa avin kumar Mr. Professor Arun Kumar and members of this august audience who have assembled here out of love, admiration, and respect for him. First of all, my apologies that I had to read my speech. Thanks to my not being so well enough. I consider myself extremely privileged and fortunate that in my life I met. and been a friend colleague or associate with many stalwarts of science in india one foremost such person is professor arvin kumar i met uh, professor arvin kumar ak as we normally used to refer to him for the first time in 1975 at the university department of physics where he was a member of the staff and i was a visiting teacher ak was known to be the best physics teacher in the university 
with thorough mastery over core physics subjects and our acquaintance soon developed into friendship and returned from abroad with a doctorate in theoretical nuclear physics had 3 years of postdoctoral research experience and joined ria in ria college in mumbai because of a strong desire to teach undergraduate physics back at home in 1980 i moved to western regional instrumentation center at the university of mumbai wric however neither ria college nor wric provided the environment that i was looking for and in october 1988 i switched over to homi bhava center for science education which was the place i was in search of from there i never moved anywhere else until my retirement in june 2011 ak also had meanwhile left udp joined hbcse in 1984 and started the famous homi bhava study circle for physics undergraduate students a novel a unique experiment in student talent nurture i found the study circle attractive and therefore used to participate and help in some of its sessions since i joined hbcse in 1988 ak and ak and i became colleagues the then and also the founder director of homi bhava center for sriji kulkarni whose name is has been given to this auditorium uh, already knew me for for in many years and he had been after me for joining hbcse the clinching reason however for me to do so was undoubtedly the presence of professor arvin kumar at that at the center at that time professor arvin kumar's teaching prowess always amazed me his subject knowledge was deep and thorough his explanations were always clear perspicacious and yet lucid he never he never uses in fact in fact never needs gimmicks to be in good books of students his arguments are always strong non trivial and at times serious yet students always gravitate toward him they value his teaching they attend his classes not so much to enjoy the classes but to learn the subject after his retirement from hbcc ak taught almost for a decade various core and advanced physics courses at the integrated msc program of the um University of Mumbai and DAE collaboration Center for Excellence in Basic Sciences. At this institution too, he was the most sought after teacher. Professor A K is a first-rate intellectual. That is why he could easily and effectively make transitions from physics to physics education and from there to cognitive science. Because of his immense teaching experience, his work on students' <coughs> understanding. and their alternative conceptions covered a wide array of physics topics with the help of one bright student he impressively handled even students misconceptions in learning general relativity unfortunately this important work was not appreciated even at hbcs his analytical reasoning went beyond teaching and research and extended to decision and policy making in my opinion it was ak who established in india science education as a serious discipline until he took up the position of center of center director of hbcsc the general impression even at tfr was that science education was more of education than science and was not a strong academic discipline with the emphasis on the subject content knowledge that professor arvin kumar introduced things gradually changed culminating in the recognition of science education as a faculty in the tfr deemed university <coughs> otherwise hbcc i would fear have remained a good science education in jo but not grown qualitatively excellence was now added to equity as hbcc's goal in a sense hbcc became a model science education institute for the country a model affiliated of an a model affiliate of an outstanding research institution like tfr excellence oriented programs like olympia training and in ius naturally evolved from this transition this model should have been repeated at several other places in the country unfortunately this has not been the case this could be worth considering for the national education policy 2020 when it is being implemented i was a witness to the hbcsc transition and i am happy that i could contribute to it whatever way i could i was a member of the hbcsc management committee first and then board later 
since 1992 and attending the board meetings during the transition period used to be a wonderful memorable educating experience i must record here that this desirable change in hbcsc would not have become possible if hbcsc did not have unreserved support from its parent organization tifr tifr which is truly a liberal intellectually strong and honest organization ak's teaching prowess is reflected also in his books and textbook writing his book series how and why in physics which he wrote in collaboration with dr shreesh barve is outstanding and every physics undergraduate student should study it ak excels in preparing questions and exercises he single handedly developed the totality of chapter end exercise chapter end exercises of higher secondary standard 11 standard 12 physics textbooks for the ncert published in the late 90s the quality of these exercises is hardly matched by other higher secondary level physics textbooks in india and perhaps elsewhere in the world too he contributed significantly to the national education framework 2005 brought out by ncert especially to its part on science education his thoughts on what science is and how it should be taught are so readable and are a guide to all science teachers they come from his deep study and understanding of history and philosophy of science another striking feature of ak's personality is that okay, uh, he attracts and what which attracts me in particular is that he is a scientist to the core you will never be able to find a non scientific or a pseudo scientific argument in his discourse neither does he tolerate any such arguments he enjoys to work in a workshop mode group working in a cyclic pattern planning writing checking discussing reviewing and rewriting i immensely enjoyed working with him in this mode for a series of four books on remedial mathematics at the secondary school level much of the work on the considerably acclaimed science exhibition history of science and gender of science that hbcc had developed uh, was also carried out in this manner to sum up what hbcc is today is because of ak i repeat that i consider myself fortunate that i happened to be ak's colleague to me he has been a friend philosopher guide and a guru i am also lucky that despite serious health issues i could be here to greet him on the day of his felicitation on completing 80 years and to express my gratitude to him may he have many more years of life happy healthy and as fulfilling as ever thank you all thank you professor pradhan i would uh, like to invite professor vinod sani next Arvin, before I say anything, very many happy returns of the day. Are you able to hear me, or uh, yeah, maybe you have to? Okay, a bit. I can speak in this. So, many many happy returns of the day, though belatedly, because today is your official birthday. Uh, Arvin's real birthday is fifteenth of October. i happened to be talking to my son and uh, when i mentioned to him that i am going to attend this event he said convey best wishes even on my behalf and i'll tell you why that is because uh, sobal used to study in the junior college and some of the enrichment programs you supported thanks to dr kakotkar and i we were on the governing council of education society and of course arvin doesn't need any excuse physics education epitomizes arvin's life so to tell you the truth this 
a little booklet which has been compiled, I thought does justice to that because it says symposium, we forget about physics education for a at AK-80. My mind goes back, actually the first time I met Arvind was back in July of 1961. I doubt whether there is anybody who has an older association than mine. And it so happened, uh, Anvesh mentioned this, that Arvind was one of the recipients of All India Entrance uh, Scholarship, which used to be offered by Delhi University in those days. Uh, it used to be 100 rupees scholarship per month. Our tuition fee was 15 rupees. The room rent used to be 20 rupees and the mess bill used to be about 45 rupees. So you are still left with about 20 rupees at the end of the month and the one was, that was a princely sum. Now, Arvind joined the physics honors in Delhi University. Hansraj College happened to be just the conduit because the classes were held in the university campus. And I followed Arvind a year later. I was also lucky to have won that entrance scholarship. So I ended up in Hansraj College Hostel. And that's how I came to know of Arvind. My admiration has simply been going up exponentially ever since. I saw a, a glimpse of it because when Sapna Sharma was chairing a session and Sahana Murthy was talking about Arvind, her last slide summed it up very well. She wanted to pay tributes to you. And it just crossed my mind, here is a person who for generations has been stimulating people. And from Anvesh's talk, one thing became pretty obvious. You've been doing it passionately. So the only example which comes to my mind, I'll give you one or two incidents which stand out in my memory. Uh, we ran a quantum mechanics uh, refresher course at uh, St. Xavier's College in South Mumbai. And typical of Arvind, he starts that course. He says, well, this is going to be a course. I'm Arvind Kumar, blah, blah, blah. And then he starts his lecture. No inaugural function, nothing of the sort. Arvind knows only one thing. Physics should be communicated without any dilution, no extraneous thoughts. So the thought which comes to my mind is, apparently, Bhim Sen Joshi, the famous singer, went to a meeting or something like that. And people were asking him to give a speech. Bhim Sen Joshi said, look, I know of only one thing, and that is to sing. So if you ever <laughs> asked Arvind Kumar, he will also tell you, give you only a lecture on physics, because everything else is extraneous according to him. What is so unusual about this sort of an attitude? We have an environment in which retaining that purity, I think, is a laudable achievement. And perhaps you have imbibed all those qualities from your mentor and guru, Professor Udgankar. Several things run through my mind because in the day, days when I passed out of the training school and joined Atomic Energy Establishment Trombe, we used to still go to TIFR often and typically meet Arvind at least once or twice or thrice a week. And that is the time I met people like Pradhan, people like Rangawala. And I realized that that purity is actually permeating the entire institution. I think against this was the point which Professor Pradhan made. So in that purity, to retain that purity and communicate that purity is something which is indeed very laudatory. I don't know whether I can uh, cite many examples, but I remember that uh, there was a committee which was constituted by DA Secretariat. Anupam Das Gupta used to be one of the members of that. And you know, when people make very provocative statements, and obviously he was Joint Secretary R&D, he has to find uh, something is not going right and so on. Arvind had a very patient way of handling all those. <coughs> he would rebut everything by sheer logic. By the third meeting, Anupam Das Gupta had been converted. He had shed all those criticisms. In fact, in those conversations, at times, uh, somebody would say, Professor Yeshpal would say, you know, no, you, sh you should be teaching how a cycle is, uh, the dynamics of a cycle or something. And then says very privately, he would say, 
No, that's a very complex problem. So in fact, you have to develop the concepts through simpler ideas. Here is a person who is immersed in teaching physics. So he knows inside out, he would even go looking at the Mufassal areas of Maharashtra, trying to understand the learning impediments and so on. Arvind, I can go on, but I think all I can say is salutations to you. Continue your extraordinary work, which is going to stimulate many more generations of people who would be benefici beneficiaries of your enormous capacity and dedication. God bless you and my best wishes. Thank you, uh, Professor Sani. Uh, we'll next uh, hear from Professor N. Satyamurti, who is uh, joining online. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, it's my pleasure and privilege to say a few words about Dr. Arvind Kumar. I got to know him, but not exactly by accident. For some reason, I was made a member of some committee of the HBCSE. Then I started interacting with him. And I didn't know why I was there. But uh, it, every meeting was enjoyable. And I had nothing much to say. Until one day he surprised me by asking me to be the chairman of the International Chemistry Olympiad hosted by India. And I didn't know what that meant, although I had given some lectures for the Olympiad students. Then he put me at ease, saying, look, you be the scientific chairman, I will be the overall chairman. Then I could breathe easily, then I could uh, agree to do the job, we put together a committee, and we started making question paper. First, you have to make model questions, then of course you make the real question paper. And many of us came from IATs and some from IASC and so on. And we used to make question paper for JE, for GATE. So when we started making, we thought, you know, one or two meetings will be done. Then we started interacting with Dr. Arvind Kumar. He would say, oh, that's a JE question. Oh, that is a descriptive question. Very quickly, he would uh, demolish most of our questions. We had to learn how to frame questions for the chemistry Olympiad. Remember, everybody has been talking about the great physicist, Arvind Kumar, uh, in research, great in research, great in teaching, great in physics education. And here he was sitting through the team which was making the question paper for the chemistry Olympiad. After several iterations, we lost track of how many iterations we did. Uh, enough has been said about AK's uh, uh, character to be perfect and to arrive at a complete solution. If one wanted an illustration of it, you don't look for physics. Look at the question paper that was made for the International Chemistry Olympiad posted by HBCSC in India. It was a remarkable success. I would give most of the credit to AK. Of course, we were there as a team to make the question paper. There were only two changes made in the question paper. And both those changes were English changes made by uh, somebody from Cambridge. That was such a perfect solution. I can uh, go on, but since my time is limited, I would like to say, even that was a limited experience interacting with Dr. Arvind Kumar. I had an opportunity. Most of the time, I end up as a chairman of a committee because the chairman drops off in the last minute. This happened when we had to review HBCSE, and the Professor D. Balasubramaniam was to be the chair, and he couldn't come, so I was asked to be the chair, and I did. I think for three days or four days, Dr. Jayashri Ramdas was the direct, center director. We went through the entire uh, activities of HBCSE as part of the review. There were international 
members also then i could fathom the contribution of dr arvind kumar to the center anvesh kept using the word institution building clearly arvind kumar was an institution builder uh, if i say that you cannot find anybody uh, after him some people may not be happy because always there are successors i have seen some of the successors it doesn't reflect on them but the fact remains hbcsc is what it is today with all its expansion with all its activities largely due to the directorship of dr arvind kumar before closing i must also add he was instrumental in forming the association of chemistry teachers which so be indian association of chemistry teachers along the lines of indian association of physics teachers but there was a nomenclature problem so finally it became association of chemistry teachers registered and rhbcse and it continues to be active under the umbrella of hbcse and uh, one last thing i would like to say is that when we were trying to find out the decide the in in, in some best teacher award when it came to arvind kumar there was no discussion it was a unanimous choice it was very clear the man has contributed immensely from whatever we have heard from everybody else so far and i join all of you in saluting dr arvind kumar and i wish him all the best Thank you, Professor Satyamurthy. Uh, I'd like to call uh, Professor Kailash Rusagi. Good afternoon, and congratulations, Arvind. I'm delighted to be here. because other than vinod i think i know you the la longest <laughs> and uh, we had a big uh, interaction i met him first time actually in B in ramjas college hostel where he had come to meet sodesh mahajan uh, who was his experimental partner i presume and uh, then of course we met uh, when we were in training school we got some uh, insights into training school and the life after and then when i joined tipr we shared the office and a uh, lot of other things so i am going to tell you about the research part of it uh, which is from the tipr days even at that time there are two constants of uh, arvind kumar's character one is uh, behind a very quiet demeanor once he has decided something is extremely determined and gets to a decision very very fast and sticks to it till completion one anecdote i will recount professor rajshekran suggested some problem which arvind liked to do it involved calculation of lots of traces of matrices uh, of uh, polyspin matrices combinations and so on some cross sections ratios were to be calculated he made a very quick calculation and decided that this is going to take this much time and this much work and so on so forth went to the store issued a gross of paper took it to his home in daisar and came back after one week with all the calculations done Rashekran has not actually calculated how long it will take, and I don't know what finally happened to those trace calculations. He had done the job completely and thoroughly. He enjoyed uh, research, had a collaboration with uh, Professor Pati, and uh, then went on to CERN. We continued our discussions. he also showed the second trait that i want to talk about is uh, complete objectivity there were issues about our uh, things that were happening in tfr 
he was asked to actually leave TIFR when he was a postdoc on leave from TIFR. And uh, I was annoyed. So I wrote to him and he replied. I have that letter still with me. His analysis was completely, completely objective and he completely supported TIFR decision, whatever that was, no matter how it affected us. It didn't actually affect me because I knew from the beginning that the TIFR position is still PhD, in spite of being from training school, etc. In his case, he didn't even know that. But that letter is a great reading even now. It's a long letter. I don't want to quote anything from that, but to just say that it's an example of objectivity which he showed then and continues to show now, forever and forever. I think he is a, that he is a great teacher I knew from, so to say, childhood, because uh, we learned lots of things when we, we shared uh, a common room where all the students used to sit, uh, Deepan, Arvind, Radha Kant, and me. And uh, we enjoyed. We also used to discuss what is original physics, what is not so original physics, what is exciting, what is not so exciting, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We found many things. We differed on many things, but uh, the dialogue has never stopped. Whenever we meet, we take it off as if we had met only the day before. So uh, great to have learned many things from you. Above all, determination and the objectivity. It's very important to remain objective even when personal things are involved. And to take action once you've decided that this is the right course to do. I think it's very, very important learnings. You learn, and it's an important thing for all the science uh, teaching uh, fraternity. Students learn not only from teachers, they learn a lot from each other. It's important, therefore, to have a collection of students who are bright, because they pull along many other people who are perhaps not that bright. So combination, the, this students learning from each other, it's a, exam, it's a very important part, for example, in IIT hostels. People even who have parents staying in IIT, still prefer to stay in the hostel because students learn a lot from each other. It's an important thing in all the science education or in any education, in fact. So we learned a lot uh, from Arvind, and thank you so much. And I wish you lots of lots of time of very, very active life, as has always been. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Saki. Uh, may I call uh, Professor Sudhir Panse? It was some, some time in 1973-74, uh, I had been to University Department of Physics under faculty improvement program from Sate College. And Dr. Arvind Kumar was uh, in the UDP at that time. So we started interacting. I used to ask him some questions. And uh, that is how we started our discussion. Uh, on physics, but it is my great privilege that not only I call him as my friend, but he calls me as my as his friend. Uh, we developed friendship, and uh, apart from physics, on various other matters also there used to be discussions. I used to interact with his. Uh, study circles, 
since the time it was being held at uh, Nana Chauk, and then when it was being held here also, in the beginning, uh, he used to stay at Ville Parli that time, and I stayed at Gorega. So we used to travel back together and discuss many things. We had a nice group, uh, occasionally meeting on some of the evenings to discuss on various matters. Dr. Pradhan was uh, a part of this group. My friend Rajwade was subsequently added to it. Now, his entire career was uh, very deeply and in detail described, but there is one gap there, and that is an important incidence which I want to tell you. Uh, he was in UDP until something like 1981, and he joined uh, Homi Baba Center somewhere around 1983. After leaving University Department of Physics, for some small period, he was a science officer in uh, British Council. And when we used to meet at that time, once he very seriously told me, I was in Sate College that time, that was Parle College then. So he was once seriously asking me, whether there is any job possibility of physics teacher in your college. I said, no, right now there is no vacancy. He said, even if it is in a junior college of any college in Mumbai, please let me know. I said, this is a ridiculous. Is there any problem with the uh, job at uh, British Council? Then he said, no, it's a very nice job. There is hardly any work that I have to do. I have to travel in uh, aeroplanes to different cities in India and see the projects which are being presented. I don't have to go into details of those projects. But my problem is that there is no work that I have to do there. And more importantly, I miss teaching. I want to do teaching and even if it is junior college, I will be happy to be a teacher there. That, those were his words at that time. Fortunately, uh, V.G. Kulkarni had the foresight, two of them met, and V.G. Kulkarni uh, took him for uh, Humi Baba Center. Subsequently, Pradhan also joined here, and the center became very big one. And it is the fortunate uh, uh, thing for the students in India, students in Mumbai and around, that he joined Humi Baba Center. Otherwise, it could have been, he, he, his passion for teaching, that's what I want to convey, passion for teaching was so intense, it's so intense, that he would have been a teacher in a junior college also for doing that. That's what he sincerely was saying at that time. But fortunately, he joined here, and then he helped and developed physics teaching in many different ways uh, in our country, including the Olympiad program about which everyone is talking. So this was the episode which I wanted to share with you and I wish Dr. Arvind Kumar a very long, healthy and active life uh, in future also. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Panse. Uh, Professor Abbas Rangwala. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I will fill in 10 years which have not been detailed here in Arvind's career. That is the time that we were together in University Department of Physics. I met Arvind somewhere in, I, I thought mid-60s, but here I got the exact date, 64. Uh, in TIFR, uh, but we didn't re interact that very intensely. But in 1971, both of us joined almost simultaneously Department of Physics of University of Mumbai, which had been established in May 1971, and, and uh, its head was Professor M. C. Yoshi, again from TIFR. There is one more colleague who joined with us 
S. C. Padi, who was also from T. I. F. R. So there was three of us, and uh, it was a wonderful time. Uh, in the sense that it was a new department, a uh, lot of things to be done, and um, 1973 or something of that sort, the new syllabus, B.Sc. new syllabus had come into the picture, and we had to. Uh, kind of we were involved in framing it so this is where arvin starts with his career in uh, teaching and very seriously uh, i want to highlight a few things which later on uh, reflects in his uh, people said his devotion to teaching uh, initially i mean he taught somebody did mention um, mathematical methods that uh, Denary and Krzyzewski's book, but he was also teaching nuclear physics as a special thing, a special uh, uh, course. And what would he do? He would he had to there was this um, some sixty lectures or forty lectures have to be given. Part of it is angular momentum. Say first you start with it. He would pick up Edmund's book from cover to cover, cover. Entire angular momentum, the kind of thing, rather than take a book in nuclear physics or quantum mechanics and then take that part of it. Secondly, he also, and I'm saying this thing because it reflects in his later career in H HBA. Oh, sorry, I I have the movie Baba HB CSC. Right, I got it because there are lots of. Uh, I mean, the, for instance, he had to teach nuclear physics. One year he would take up a book, and I still remember it. And most of you wouldn't even know the name Eisenberg and Greiner. And he would cover from that thing. Next year, it's Egal Talmi's book. Third, I do not know whether he touched Bohr and Mortelson's book or not. But that's what he would do: take a pick a book. And go through it. Uh, so that is his hallmark. And we used to have lots of discussion concerning what to teach, how to teach. And I think we had really wonderful time under benign headship of M. C. Joshi, who would allow us to do anything. Now you must realize that what would happen when you want to teach something which is much more than what is given in the syllabus, which says forty lectures. So you call extra classes, right? You each lecture would be instead of one hour, it will be two hours. Extra classes, um, and then you call the students on Sundays, five hours, and stuff like that. So that's the kind of thing which started early in when he was in the university. Um, the point that I want to also make is the following: is that the You must realize the university structure. Uh, we have this syllabus, which is made by some set of people. You may be involved, you may not be involved in it. Then there is the teaching. Now, Mumbai University has a very peculiar thing at that point of time, namely, there would be something like 150 students enrolled for physics in MSc, but most of them would be with the colleges. But they would have lectures. Centralized lecture in the university department of physics. The student, so you and there we used to teach, and then there is this examination. The paper setter, paper setter would look at the syllabus, and he is not involved in the teaching, so you would set the questions. The point that I am trying to make is the following: students, students, nevertheless attended everything. The reason for that is, the kind of they were even implicitly they realized that they were benefiting from the whatever was being told to them. We had we used to have lots of discussion. People have said that um, he is um, very, I mean, he is um, very incisive, uh, very logical, and stuff like that. Let me emphasize one part of uh, his personality. I hope you will not mind it. Which 
no one has mentioned it. He is a romantic at heart. Believe me, believe me, he is a romantic at heart. He was a great admirer of Dilip Kumar. Okay. For example, at that time there was this movie called Saraswati Chandra, if you remember. And he was sold on that thing. And what is the story of Saraswati Chandra? A boy falls in, girl with a girl, uh, falls in love with a girl and stuff like that. Girl gets married to somebody else. And he would be moved by that thing. You know, kind of thing. So please correct your impression of Arvind Kumar. <laughs> he is not a bland physics logician, you know, kind of thing. Uh, this is Arvind Kumar. And we used to have lots of lovely discussions. And of course, uh, I was the first sufferer of his, you know, kind of incisive logic, you know, kind of thing. And we had wonderful time together. Uh, I, I really learned a lot from him. Unfortunately, I have not been able to implement whatever he has been trying to communicate. Uh, it has been mentioned, one thing I want to say about uh, uh, D'Souza and Bala Ayer. D'Souza did her PhD, it was mentioned, so I'm just repeating it. Uh, on I thought it was self-induced transparency. It's a topic in quantum optics. Then the next person does in general relativity, Balayer, right? So he could move with ease from one to the other. And so these traits that one finds uh, in a more kind of pronounced manner coming up later in his career were already there uh, in, uh, when he was in the university. And um, we had wonderful time together, going to canteen, have cups of teas, snacks. Uh, and it was a... University has a very different atmosphere. There are uh, many departments, not necessarily science departments. And um, so you interact with people of other disciplines. And Erwin has left a huge impression on me personally and on many others. I think, I think he's, he's, he's acknowledged that probably his basic things formulated when he was in the university. Now, one thing which is, uh, I don't, I have not understood it, why he decided to leave, maybe Arvind can explain it, uh, department and join British Council, you know, kind of at that point of time. What was the attraction, I don't know. Anyway, but uh, that's where we lost him. Unfortunately, simultaneously, Professor M.C. Joshi passed away. Um, anyway, so Arvin, thank you very much for the lovely time that we had in the university and all that you gave to us. Wish you all the very best for many, many years to come and a very productive life. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mark my word. He is a romantic at heart. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Angwala. And uh, although it's not my turn, and I've already spoken, but since you have spoken about this romantic thing, so with AK's permission, let me <laughs> let me also share something. So AK, I think, is a fan of Shah Rukh Khan, but but according to him, Shah Rukh Khan's Devdas is an absolute blasphemy of the original <laughs> Devdas, <laughs> and. And the other thing is that if you think that he's only fond of old movies and all that, no, he gives a very detailed commentary on the railway station scene of, guess the movie, Dilwale Dulhaniya Le Jayenge. So, so he has these facets also. Okay, uh, uh, may I call on Professor uh, A.P. Deshpande? And after this, probably we will take a break, but we have something to do before the break. But uh, first, Professor Deshpande. Professor Arvind Kumar is a multilingual person, so let, let me speak in Marathi. Dusri Zababdari Major Asheki Marta Shasanacha, Marathi Bhasha Salagar Samit Yurmi Aslamure, me Marathi Bolai Lavail. Arvind Kumar, he Marathi Vidnan Parishadecha, Don Hazar Sahasali, 
यवतमाळ जिल्ह्यामध्ये वणीला भरलेल्या संमेलनाचे अध्यक्ष होते आणि ते संमेलन बघितल्यानंतर ते म्हणाले हे संमेलन तुमचं फार सिरियस नेचरचं आहे आणि खरोखरी चांगल्या पद्धतीने ऑर्गनाईज केलेलं आहे त्यामुळे त्या ह्याच्यामध्ये त्याच्यापूर्वी आम्ही त्याला संमेलन म्हणायचो आमचे अध्यक्ष देवधर ॲपलब इंडस्ट्रीचे चेअरमन ते म्हणाले संमेलनापेक्षा ह्याला अधिवेशन म्हणा करणे अधिक सिरियस असतं आणि अरविंद कुमारांनी तेच सांगितलं त्यानंतर अलीकडे ज्या वेळेला त्या भाषणांचा संग्रह करण्याची एक संधी मनोविकास प्रकाशनातर्फे आमच्याकडे आली तेव्हा मी अरविंद कुमारांना असं म्हटलं की याच्यामध्ये तुम्हाला काही सुधारणा करायची आहे का त्यांनी ताबडतोब एका रात्रीमध्ये सुधारणा करून दिली म्हणजे कोणीतरी म्हणालं की रात्री एक वाजून पंचेचाळीस मिनटांनी सुद्धा ते पाठवतात मेसेज त्या पद्धतीने बहुतेक त्यांनी काम केलं आणि चटकन ते सगळं पाठवलं दोन साली प्राध्यापक उद्गावकरांना ऐंशी वर्ष झाली तेव्हा एक कार्यक्रम आम्ही या इथे होमी बाबा सेंटरमध्ये केला होता दोन दिवसाचा आणि एम जी के मेहनन त्याला आलेले होते तर त्या कार्यक्रमासाठी अत्यंत बारकाईने त्याचं प्लॅनिंग अरविंद कुमार यांनी केलेलं होतं आणि त्याचं श्रेय विनाकारण मला प्रोफेसर उद्गावकरांनी दिलं दॅट यू आर द बेस्ट इव्हेंट मॅनेजर ते आज मी परत करतो तुमच्याकडे आता दो एकोणीसशे नव्याण्णव सालचं नॅशनल काउन्सिल फॉर सायन्स अँड टेक्नॉलॉजी कम्युनिकेशन डी एस सीचं डिरेक्टोरेट त्याच्यातर्फे विज्ञान प्रसारासाठी होमी भाभा विज्ञान शिक्षण केंद्राला पुरस्कार मिळाला त्याच वेळेला मलाही पुरस्कार मिळाला होता त्यामुळे आम्ही दोघंजण एकत्र होतो रूमही आम्ही एकत्र शेअर केलेली होती दुसऱ्या दिवशी आम्ही दोघंही परत एकत्र आलो त्यामुळे तो सहवास त्यांचा मला त्यावेळेला चांगल्या प्रकारे घडलेला होता गोवा गोव्यामध्ये जी स्टेम कॉन्फरन्स झाली त्या कॉन्फरन्सचं एक चित्र मग असे दाखवलं पण त्याहीपेक्षा मला सांगायची दुसरी गोष्ट अशी की त्या कॉन्फरन्ससाठी आलेल्या लोकांना जे प्रवास भाडं द्यायचं होतं ते देण्यासाठी स्वतः अरविंद कुमार बसलेले होते इतक्या गांभीर्याने त्यांनी ती गोष्ट घेतली ती आणि तुमच्यापैकी ज्यांनी ॲडमिनिस्ट्रेशनमध्ये काम केलं असेल त्यांना माहिती आहे की बरेच खटके त्या प्रवासाचं भाडं देताना होत असतात तेवढ्यासाठी मुद्दाम अरविंद कुमार त्या ठिकाणी बसलेले होते मला वाटतं अरविंद कुमारांनी ज्या अनेक गोष्टी या इथे होमी बाबा विज्ञान शिक्षण केंद्रात केल्या त्याच्यापैकी ऑलिम्पियाडचा जो कार्यक्रम त्यांनी सुरू केला तो त्यांच्या शिरपेसामध्ये एक नवीन असा तुरा खोवला गेला त्याचं कारण भारताची शिक्षणाच्या क्षेत्रामध्ये जी काही ख्याती आहे ती लोकांच्या नजरेला त्यामुळे येऊ लागली आणि दरवर्षी काही ना काही काही ना काही मेडल्स आपण मिळवून आणतो एवढंच नव्हे तर या ठिकाणी अनेक विषयामधल्या कॉन्फरन्सेस ऑलिम्पियाड भरवण्याचा मानसुद्धा होमी बाबा विज्ञान शिक्षण केंद्राला मिळालेला आहे त्यामुळे अरविंद कुमार यांनी एक चांगल्यापैकी लिडरशिप होमी बाबा विज्ञान शिक्षण केंद्राला दिलेली आहे अरविंद कुमार तुम्हाला दीर्घायुष्य लाभो नुसतंच दीर्घायुष्य नव्हे ते चांगल्या आरोग्याचा लाभ हो अशी इच्छा प्रगट करतो धन्यवाद Thank you, uh, Professor Deshpande. Uh, we'll soon take a break, but before the break, we have something to do because it's after all in celebration of Professor Avin Kumar's birthday. So uh, we will uh, have a cake cut by him. So I will request AK to come on stage and the others to just uh, quickly arrange <laughs> for the cake. <laughs> and then uh, we'll have a tea break after that and come back uh, in about 20 minutes. Lights, lights on the stage, please. Thank you. 
Yeah, AK, if you can please come on stage. And I invite other other people also, whoever wants, especially HBCAC people, please come on stage. <laughs> Meena, please come. Anybody else can come. Yeah. I am told that nowadays candles have gone out of fashion. <laughs> but there's, yeah, please come. AK is, uh, yeah, please come, come, come. Please come. Whoever wants to come, please come. It's a birthday celebration, so please come. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, please come. Okay, so we'll have a break now. Please, uh, there's tea outside, and uh, we go out, and we'll have some of the cake also, of course. <laughs> so, and then we come back uh, in about 20 minutes, if possible. Sorry, we uh, we also have a big card to give you. We'll continue with the reminiscences and tributes. There are many people still waiting to speak. But uh, before we do that, because uh, after those, uh, Professor Arvind Kumar would like to uh, say a few words at the end. So we thought that this, would, uh, this break would be a good opportunity uh, for, uh, I would invite our center director, Professor Arnab Bhattacharya, to propose a vote of thanks for the symposium before we go on with the reminiscences. Yeah, we, th we sh thought we would just end with AK's words and um, not have to do formal uh, things after that. So it's again an honor to be here back and uh, thank many people without whom this event wouldn't have happened. Uh, the first is the, the major conspirators of the event called the Symposium Organizing Committee or whatever. Uh, this is people like Anvesh, Mashood, Deepa, Shirish, Praveen, uh, thank you all. I think you all agree this was a great idea. We should have done this. We should have absolutely done this. Thank you all for taking the trouble and getting everything together, writing all the letters, inviting the people, doing the needful. But then to actually pull it off requires the efforts 
skills, the competencies, the you know work, hard work of a lot of people at the center and beyond. And uh, I'd like to thank Manoj for taking care of the website, designing the registration materials, include this beautiful pad that I think uh, is, is really nice. Uh, Sumana, Sandhya, Shweta, Suchita, thank you for arranging, ensuring that we've not just been fed, but fed very well. Um, Vagmare, Bamne, Shanoi, thank you for taking care of accommodation, transport, uh, all the logistics to ensure that people have been hosted and brought here well. Uh, Suchita, Sonal, Rahul, Gajanan, all the registration materials and, you know, innumerable, small, little, large administrative tasks, whenever called upon, always ready to help. Um, this has also been part of the symposium on physics education, not just today, but, um, um, you know, we've been having lectures here and yeah. again, um, Rani and Sachin, if you're hiding there, uh, Mamta, Pritesh, Manoj, Rish, thank you for ensuring that the sessions ran well, all the talks were loaded and everything, all that happened. Back end, of course, the entire, uh, you know, the, the purchase and accounts uh, teams uh, who've been taking care of the TADA and all the materials that we needed to get for this. Um, uh, Pragati, Krishna, your teams, Rasam, all of you. Um, and then, of course, you know, the participants of the physics camp. I hope you had a great experience here. Um, and, um, you know, you will go back carrying behind you a small bit of HPCSE and uh, a lot of, lot of um, memories of not just physics, but all the interactions you've had and all the wonderful stuff you've done here. Thank you all the other physics teachers from across the country who've come here, uh, especially today. All the senior colleagues and friends of AK, uh, all our ex, um, the members of the center, our previous, our alum. Uh, alum, 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 alum. Mike, Mike, Mike is off, off, off. It's not me, 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 it's, it's something happening there. And, uh, you know, all of the HBCC members right now, the present uh, HBCC members, all our staff, students, thank you all. Thank you all for helping us ensure that this event went off so well. And with this, I think let's get back to hearing the reminiscences. We'll have a few more people who've expressed their desire to speak. And then, of course, we'll hear AK at the end of it all. So, thank you. Thank you, Arnab. I would now like to call Professor Dipan Ghosh, another person who has known AK for very long. I have known Arvind since 1966, when I joined uh, TFR as a graduate student. And uh, after so many people have spoken about him, I have very little things to add, excepting one thing. Um, when Anwes asked me to talk here, and uh, he said that it is in commemoration of Arvind's 80th birthday, that was one good reason for me not to agree. And the reason was, Arvind is so meticulous about what you have, he hears every physics sentence. I mean, I have to be extra careful. So when I came in the morning and Anwes told me that Arvind is unable to come in the morning but he will join later, I was actually relieved. <laughs> so Arvind, it has been great knowing you. I have interacted with him over all these years since 66 in very many ways and as all of you have pointed out I've learned a lot of him, from him and uh, his contributions I don't have to recount again and again wish you a very long career after that Keep on you, brother. thank you so much Oh. Yeah, I would now uh, like to call upon uh, Professor R.V. Hosur, who has joined online. And may I request the others who are online to please keep your microphones muted. Uh, Professor R.V. Hosur, maybe. Yeah. 
Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, just a minute. Uh, can you just, yeah, we yeah. can hear you. Just wait for a minute. We'll get your video. Yeah. Yes, you may start. Okay, thank you, Anvesh, in the first place for uh, asking me to speak here on this special occasion of uh, celebration, celebrating the 80th birthday of uh, Professor Arvind Kumar. I have known Arvind Kumar for so many years in many different, on many different occasions in many different capacities. Firstly, from TIFR, as a member of their um, uh, um, committee on the Home Weber Center for Science Education. I have seen his commitment to education then so deep rooted, committed for school education, improving quality of education at the school level, quality of physics education, chemistry education, and all, all aspects. You have, you have muted accidentally, I think, so please unmute. Yeah, ah, yeah. okay. Can, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes, we can. Okay. So it, has, it is a great occasion and you know, I, mean, I don't know how to express my words uh, about Professor Arvind Kumar. He is such a fantastic leader and a teacher. And I learned a lot from him. And to firstly, to be so committed to the job you are at. With regard to the education he was taking up for school education, at the Home Center for Science Education in many different ways, going to various schools, organizing lectures over there, workshops over there, writing books in Marathi, Hindi, and he also part of the curriculum making at the NCRTs, and many different ways. It was total commitment, total commitment for education. And no wonder, of course, HBCSC uh, thrived very well under his leadership. And then he organized the Olympiads. As part of the chemistry Olympiad, their international Olympiad, which was organized very meticulously, he was very careful in going through every small detail of the organization, how things are done, and how what are the equipments required, where are the where are the um, uh, locations where these experiments can be done, coordinated with various different institutions in this regard, and that was wonderful. That was a great experience in the um, uh, Olympiads. And of course, the Olympiad program has been going on very well for so many years. And the students are becoming better and better uh, with all the education uh, there. And then he organizes the NIUS as a new initiative to teach at the those who are classed past the school and going towards the college. And they are in a different level now. So therefore, and they need a different kind of an education. He actually mentored, I mean, um, made um, uh, appropriate adjustments to accommodate this kind of people, conduct classes at the Home Power Center for Science Education to give them a training which is which will make them good um, uh, scientists in the, in the final place. He himself was a great scientist, outstanding theoretical physicist with his training we had and we go through every, every detail and to make the understanding very fundamental. So that was, that was uh, very clear from his approach and in the meticulous way. And then in then in the UMDA Center for Excellence in and there is CBS, and he and Professor Chitre actually steered this center, and with the commitment with a lot of difficulties over there, as one can imagine, that the place where you are in you are going in a, a the university environment and the funding coming from the DAE, it is a very complicated situation. But the commitment to education did not change. Actually, a very great idea that. Um, using the um, uh, resources available in different colleges and institutions in uh, Mumbai to improve the quality of education in the universities was a great idea. And this was actually to do provide an, a, an initiative which can be taken up at other universities to improve the quality of education all over the country. This was the great thinking. Because establishing standalone institutions is so expensive and it is not possible to do it too many times. Therefore, this was a model which was actually conceived by Dr. Kakorkar and then Professor Chitre and then Arvind Kumar. They were all the um, founders of this place. And um, uh, it was a struggle there. And uh, one could see I got a lot of advice from him uh, for while making the changes over there, building up the institution. And he was a great advisor. 
taking every detail, looking at every detail of the things which are practical and which are not practical, that is something which is outstanding. And of course, he continued to teach for so many years and the students would enjoy his teaching and um, uh, discussions even outside the classrooms. And that was a, a great experience. He created a kind of an atmosphere of Gurukul for the students over there who are living there. They're taking a lot of interest in physics. And initially, it was all physics only in the Center for Excellence. And subsequently, other fields were added like chemistry, biology, and mathematics. And all of those things were there. Uh, mathematics also came up. And Dr. Balwan Singh, who was there, actually spearheading the uh, mathematics program over there. So it, it so it was a continuous growth in the in the center, and it has seen through um, uh, many batches now, and all of them are doing extraordinarily well at various places in the world. Many of them are in the country, and many are uh, abroad, and we can hear uh, the um, uh, compliments from them as to how they benefited by being in this. This is a unique place uh, because of the quality of education which was there and the intense interactions between the teachers and the students. That is something which they remember forever. So that was a great occasion for me to be with uh, Dr. Arvind Kumar, who has been a mentor, inspirer, and, and various um, in, in various capacities. And his commitment to education and commitment to the job at hand, that is something which is outstanding. And ATS is not too much. Actually, I mean, he has many more years to go. Surely he will continue to go, with the, go conti uh, complete the century. And surely he should be able to continue uh, with good health and, and the peace of mind. So um, uh, I think I will, uh, it's very difficult to describe too many uh, in a short in a short period of time. But uh, I wish him all the best and uh, keep uh, being active and with you, wish you good health and peace of mind. Dr. Arvind Kumar, wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor Hasur. Uh, may I now call uh, Professor P.K. Aluwalia, President IAPT. Thank you, uh, Anvish. Uh, I'm really very happy to be present on this occasion and uh, meet uh, uh, Professor Arvind. I first uh, uh, heard Professor Arvind in Lucknow. Sir, you must be remembering. Uh, Professor Wagmare was the president of IAPT at that time and you gave a lecture on alternative conceptions, if I am remembering that correctly. And that was my first initiation on physics education research itself. So that was very interesting. And after that, we were corresponding with you also. And uh, you sent us uh, the oh. American Journal of Physics resource letters on physics education research. And I think that was how we got interested, could gather literature and do work uh, in a university setup itself. Uh, I really am thankful. Uh, that you initiated us into that kind of an area. And uh, uh, there is one in other interesting thing which we recently actually uh, had the occasion to have from Professor Arvind. We started a uh, physics education research series of lectures uh, on online lectures uh, under the banner of IAPT. We made a request to Professor Arvind and he readily agreed. And then he was very particular that on one topic, what topic he is going to really talk about. And he picked up the topic which was disciplinary practices in physics education research. That lecture went on for almost uh, one hour and 15 minutes. And I want to tell you something very interesting at the end of that lecture. One of the participants raised hand and he said that, uh, sir, we want to uh, find the error uh, in uh, the derivation of error in 1 upon r is equal to 1 upon r1 plus 1 upon r2 for resistances. And I have used two methods. One method gives me one answer and the other method gives me the other answer. And uh, Professor Arvind said, okay, all right, I'll look into this problem and come back to you. And around 12, uh, to be precise, 11.47, Professor Arvind sends me solution of that by both the methods giving the same answer. I mean, that is the kind of dedication 
which you find is rare it's un unimaginable and he uh, also said that uh, other very humble uh, way of professor vinda i liked it that i request you that you please share this uh, solution with the gentleman who really asked this question so now you can imagine the kind of dedication which professor arvind uh, reflects on each one of us and that is inspirational uh, i think uh, sir has been a member of iebt right from the very beginning sir your member number is 386 like member number mine is 3 to 326 sir <laughs> i was a member before you <laughs> but it is very interesting that uh, uh, you have been there with us and ever since we have been on now web uh, we are very uh, much connected with you you are receiving our mails and uh, we hope that you will keep on guiding us and blessing us because iept has a very big mandate to work upon and your guidance and your deep insight into physics education and science education are think uh, are an asset of iept itself i look forward to your guidance sir and i wish you on behalf of iept and on my personal behalf a very happy birthday maybe a slightly belated sir and uh, healthy life and uh, i hope you will keep on blessing with your insights on physics uh, on the iept forums also there was one other thought also sir which was coming i was seeing that when your uh, cv was being discussed by professor anvesh you have written lots of articles in iept bulletin also maybe what we can try to do is bring them together and publish those as a volume in an e format and i would seek your permission to do that if you will give us that permission we will be very happy thank you very much thank you professor alwalia professor pratibha jolly thank you anvesh it's such a honor to be able to meet professor arvind kumar again and i had my fan moment because i got a beautiful picture with you and uh, i can only say Uh, what a pleasure it has been to get to know you and the very many ways in which you have supported many of us across the country i think i first met you in 2002 in goa there was this kasmi unesco workshop that uh, 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 homi bhaba center did and there you were and uh, professor agarkar was uh, in charge but there you were sitting at the table and uh, all the bills that were coming you were personally looking into it and uh, i smuggled in just one line and i told you you know what i want to do a physics conference and you were so busy surrounded by people you said count me in i'm interested and i held you to that word when we did the 2005 conference at bandan no from where how we would set it up the icp had invited us to do it in the einstein year um, 2005 and the support that came from homi bhaba center showed that we are a community in india and uh, um, you just had to walk up to shobha bhattachar uh, yeah, the director tfr and we could bring Sto uh, horse stormer uh, the nobel laureate to speak at the conference uh, funding came in from there and that kind of a support is really incredible and then you came down to help us with uh, reviewing and looking at the abstracts and spent couple of days at miranda house and it has been such a wonderful experience uh, also to have then come to uh, the uh, homi bhava center to make presentation of one's work get some feedback and in 2011 when you nudged many of us out of slumber to write articles for the physics association special issue i think it helped one to pull together one's thoughts and uh, do a review and uh, today when uh, professor vijay singh pulled out that so well maintained issue i realized that i had not maintained my volume but it made me very very nostalgic so in more ways than one you have really been a role model and you have touched our lives 
and in a very quiet and gentle manner. You've nudged us to do better work, but you've also supported when support was needed. So in 2005, Dr. Chidambaram sat through the conference and he said, he called you and he called me to his office and he said, just come, why is there only one Homi Bhabha center? Why doesn't the country have more? And he nudged and said, create a consortium. Or, and today, the, yesterday we had a panel discussion on that, but uh, we did call everyone uh, from the country who was engaged in physics education to come and uh, discuss how we could share our resources and uh, create them together. But much more importantly, there was a follow-up. You may not remember, but for someone who was at that point, you know, uh, had an uphill task to establish a career in physics education and physics education research. It meant a lot to me that you and uh, Dr. Mr. Rotala from the National Science Museum and three of us meant, uh, met and we uh, brainstormed and the result was an invitation to set up the D.S. Kothari Research Center at Miranda House, which was a game changer. And today I presented that journey. And so I will always remember those milestones. And at all those milestones, your help has not been told. It's not been talked about. And that's why this fan moment of my photograph with you is very, very precious. Thank you so much. Thank you, Professor Jolly. Uh, Professor Vijay Singh. As we reflect on the past, there is a certain warmth that comes uh, with reminiscing about the good old times. And, and how should I put it? Uh, and there's also those moments that hold a special place in our hearts. So I'm using Professor Arvind Kumar's 80th anniversary as a prop to remember a, a few good old times, <laughs> happy old times. Can you turn it on for me, please? Yes. OK. And uh, uh, you'll see different people. And they are there for a certain reason. Okay. Sorry, it's not coming. I'm sorry. So basically, uh, when I in 1998, when the physics uh, when the Olympiad program was put into place with a memorandum of understanding between Arvind, uh, Professor Arvind Kumar and Dharkar, and Professor Dharkar, I should say Professor Dharkar, and the late Professor Dharkar, I was very uh, pleased to write. Uh, editorial in the bulletin of the Indian Association of Physics Teachers, of which I was the, I was the, how should I put it, I was the editor. Mm. And uh, as Arvind Kumar saw it, AK saw it, I will just use the word AK if you don't mind, instead of saying Professor Arvind Kumar, it takes two, two seconds extra, which Anvesh doesn't like. So, <laughs> so AK, AK, without my soliciting, he invited me to Homi Baba Center to participate as a resource person in the first Olympiad, 1998, when we went to Reykjavik. Okay, uh, where is this? Uh, and uh, AK always plays the back. You no, know, he did most. He did a lot of work, I would say, uh, but he always was in the background uh, and never pushed himself forward. But anyway, this is not to say no, the others pushed themselves. Let me go ahead. It's not going forward. Why is that? Maybe I'll go like this. I'm really <laughs> sorry. It's not working. I uh, click on what? Ah. ah, good. But it's not showing there. Ah. So what you see is 1998, and that is Professor Pradhan. Pradhan was the lead at that dean at that time, and that is Raik Javik, 1998, and Professor Nagarajan. But the reason I point this out is because Professor Pradhan and Rajesh Khaparde, I'm not sure if he's in the audience, but uh, Rajesh Khaparde, uh, were the, I mean, were saved our lives, you know, because they were in charge of the experimental program and, and they had the experiments ready. It was not ready, but they at least they had something that we had a fig leaf to cover ourselves for the Asian Physics, uh, uh, for the International Physics Olympiad. So that is Professor Pradhan and uh, we, when we went there, I mean, those were magic, magic times. Okay, they were like uh, miracle and miracle times because you will. There's a story I have to tell you, I and mean, I'll take one minute more to tell you the story. And the story uh -huh. is that when Professor uh, Pradhan went for the visa, okay, and when you go for the visa, you know that you're no going to get rejected. Your heart beats, no. start, starts, starts beating faster. 
okay, and you find that it is impossible to, and you're sure that it's going to get rejected on some technicality, but he was invited by the Reykjavik person to come upstairs and have tea and cookies with him. I mean, not only did they get the visa, he got the other things also. And when, we, when they went there, one of the students, I think Vijay Bhatt, got the prize for a thematic problem. And that problem was, in Iceland, how do the hot springs work? Okay. And uh, not, no Icelandic student got it, no American student got it, no Russian student got it, but an Indian student got this award and we were very, very happy. Okay, you got a bronze medal. And the, the next slide which I want to show is this Professor Dharkar, 1999. Uh, he was the other mainstay of the Physics Olympiad program and the, and, uh, and the Science Olympiad program. So that's Professor Dharkar there. And that was in Italy. Uh, one student that I want to point out is uh, Suvrat Raju, whom some of you would know. He is a leading string theorist and he's at uh, this place in, in Bangalore, IC, IC, ICTS, yeah. Okay, so that is Sivrat Raju. Uh, you go to 19, 2000 now, that is Turkey. Uh, no, not sorry, England. In England, I mean, something ama amazing happened. For the first time, we got two gold medals. And Professor Arvind Kumar was not the le uh, leader. The leaders were Professor, a very good friend of mine, and another mainstay of the experimental program, Dr. Desai, and of course, Sirish is here, so I should acknowledge him also. Uh, and. Uh, and Arvind Kumar landed there, and because they say, you know, uh, someone landed in Ahmedabad and the Indian team lost. And there's a lot of noise being made about, Kaisa Panwati lag gaya. Hear what happened, the opposite of Panwati happened. Okay. <laughs> the opposite of Panwati was that we got two gold medals and we were number three. Okay. We were number three in among 65 na uh, nations. And we were on top of the world at that time. But at that point, Professor Arvind Kumar did something which is absolutely amazing. He went from there to Amsterdam, and maybe Sar Savita can correct me, and he threw the hat in and he said, next year we will hold the International Chemistry Olympiad. Okay. And so, you know, he, this, that was a big leap because we were in the second year of, or the third year of the, uh, of the Olympiad program and he decided that we will do the ICHO because one country had backed out. Okay. And I have to tell you, I was in Berlin to, and I went to the Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra and the Berlin Philharmonic, you know, the, the conductor does very little. He does, puts his finger up and all the violins are playing. And he pushes the hand down and all the drums start, all, all the drums start beating very hard. And uh, <laughs> that is the way AK used to work. I mean, he would just get everything done by, by a gesture. <laughs> and everything in, I, in, in the Hobi Baba Center worked because of from a gesture. Okay. So I thought that was a, that is a great way to work. I mean, he never really said, now you do this or something. And, but it was, you know, that was done. Okay. So, ICHO was done. It was amazing. I never thought it would, it would work. You know, I said, it's a pagal pan hai. You know, but then you, know, you heard Asad Satyamurti saying that it was a very successful uh, and Savita will, uh, will certainly testify to that. And the last one I want to show is just to say what good times they were. You know, this, this is again Asian Physics Olymp uh, in, uh, International Physics Olympiad in Italy. And this is uh, Dharkar again, Professor Dharkar, the late Professor Dharkar. And this person is Abdullah Sadiq from Pakistan. He's a Pakistani leader. We were very, he was an absolute gentleman. And all this fear you have about Pakistan all vanished. You know, and, and it was just that we always thought, you know, that and everybody was very friendly and everybody over here was very friendly to me. I, was, I didn't belong to this department, but the entire office was put at my disposal as I became the academic coordinator of the Olympiad program. And I have to really remember, where is Sumana? She's not here. Uh, and Gajanan. I mean, they worked round the clock. I mean, you know. I mean, <laughs> so, uh, it was an impossible task. This is again, I show, this is again uh, Turkey, where we won about three gold medals. But look at this student over here. That student here wrote me a letter about last year. He is the, he, when he became the CEO of Twitter, okay, of the Twitter program. So, and then of course, something else happened. Something bad happened to me. Panwati mai lagade, because he wrote to me. Okay. Right? But you should remember the first guy. Uh, you must remember the guy in the front. Okay. Uh, this is uh, Arvind Tyagarajan, J rank 1. He remembered everything. I mean, 1937 in loads. How much did India score? He had a phenomenal memory. Okay. So, you say, Hazaro saal roti hai nargis apni benuri pe. 
हजारों साल रोती है नरगिस अपनी बेन उरी पे बड़ी मुश्किल से होता है जमन चमन में दीदवर पैदा सो दे वर लाइक दैट दिस इज 2004 केमिस्ट्री यू कैन सी सम ओल्ड फ्रेंड्स हियर एंड दे आर देयर सम ऑफ देम आर इन द ऑडियंस सपन घोष एंड डॉक्टर सामंत एंड यू सी दिस वी वर आल्सो वेरी हैप्पी बिकॉज for the first time in physics and chemistry a girl got the gold medal and that is priya gupta and before she went i thought i'll test her out you know i just wanted to take a test so i asked her started describing a question in physics okay by the time i'd ended the question she went down and wrote the answer so even before you posed the question she had known the answer these are the kinds of students we got and we still get sometimes not as lucky as in those good old days तो जैसे कहते थे कि वन यू राइट राइट डाउन सो जैसे वो एक दूसरी दूसरी कविता याद आ गई एम सॉरी वो है कि तालीम नहीं दी जाती परिंदों को उड़ानों की तालीम नहीं दी जाती परिंदों को उड़ानों की वे खुद ही समझ जाते हैं ऊंचाई आसमानों की एंड यर इज बायोलॉजी लम्पेयर आई केप दिस पर्टिकुलरली बिकॉज दे ऑल लुक सो हैप्पी you know we are all looking glum here not not that happy but they look very happy and this one i think anvesh has already shown but this is, i kept this deliberately to say that people wanted to be associated with the olympiad program you call up somebody to be the chief guest uh, you call up somebody to get money some government agency in those days i don't know i'm told that nowadays these things are not that good but uh, you could always get it and that is uh, that is because i think the program was so solid and professor arun kumar's reputation was also very solid you know uh, by the way i since i see rajaram nityanand he said something when we got three gold medals here uh, he used a statistical mechanical phrase in in in, uh, in turkey he said that now we are saying you are in trouble because there is very little face space at the top i mean now you only can go down now you can only <laughs> instead of standing third you will only stand fifth or tenth or something so i remember that you know uh anyway so now let me tell you about ak's contribution he led from the front in the beginning now i wish he would continue in the end also and give set these thematic problems but in the beginning he led from the front there was a healthy competition in making what is called thematic problems and the thematic problem is one in which you make judicious approximations use a variety of concepts okay and use a variety of techniques okay to to arrive and to understand a natural phenomena or a modern topic in physics and in 1998 he began with a bang and here is the bang he did, he set a problem on the dirac monopole and quantization of charge at that level for the 12th standard student where the student had to make understand momentum angular momentum conservation and make use of the impulse approximation okay he said if a monopole exists show that charge is quantized okay i think you remember this this is meticulously typed by uh, uh, sumana no Right. I also remember because I remember Sumanna typing it, so you know I can I can still visualize her late night typing it. The next one is of course another problem in 2000 based on a resonance article by Professor Mukunda on the genesis of the photon picture of light. Arvind Kumar read through that article and and and, and constructed that problem. Okay, uh, as I said, there was a healthy competition. There is one I made on the magnetar. Okay. and uh, at one late night when we were making the problem on the chandrashekhar limit which is actually conceptually i mean brilliant problem to make because uh, it's just uh, gravitational collapse and fermi pressure outside pauli exclusion principle okay uh, we all remember and i have to remember also sunil datta arvind kumar sunil datta and at times uh, ravi bhattacharjee would come up and join in uh, we made this problem and sunil datta quoted a brilliant poem by harvin shraya harvin shraya bachchan You know, जो बीत गई सो बात गई वो आज के लिए थोड़ा रेलिवेंट है जो बीत गई सो बात गई माना वो एक सितारा था माना वो बेहद प्यारा था जो टूट गया सो टूट गया जो छूट गया वो टूट छूट गया देखो इस अंबर को कितने तारे इसमें टूटे एवरी डे थाउजेंड ऑफ स्टार्स गेट डिस्ट्रॉयड इसमें कितने तारे टूटे इसमें कितने प्यारे छूटे ओके क्या अंबर शोक मचाता है जो बीत गई सो बात गई सो and this is the last problem i would just want to show this the discovery of the neutron which professor arvind kumar made 
And uh, this uses also a variety of concepts, including a very meticulous two-page derivation on why you have to have a head-on collision for maximum recall velocity. Okay. And this is, uh, the rest are also in Arvind Kumar's handwriting, but they are photocopies. But I have this one in his original handwriting, which I have dug out. And since we have to give gifts on the 80th birthday, this is my gift to you. I'll give it back to you, Professor Arvind Kumar. IKS is very popular nowadays. So, as Bishwa Pitama said, he was sleeping on his head. He felt the love of his love. So, everyone took a jar, took a water, took a water, took a water, took a water. But Arjun gave him a good gift, which you probably know. Arjun gave him a good gift, Arjun gave him a good gift, and gave him a good gift. So, this is the gift that I have to give him a gift. Okay, clearly that will be hard to match, <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, Professor Mayang Bhaiya. Yeah. So following Arvind Kumar, uh, following uh, Vijay, Vijay Singh on Arvind Kumar is probably the most difficult assignment I've ever had. Um, so I want to quickly say a couple of things. There's one incident I want to recall, which is the reason why I came here, actually. I'm sure Arvind Kumar doesn't remember it because it was a rather minor incident in his life. Uh, this was 77. I was an MSc student in Bombay University. And uh, Arvind Kumar had gone and given a lecture at some college. And he had started with Arvind Kumar style. So he said, these great scientists have done some great work. I will now explain it to you. And these are the things we don't know about it. And the students were completely surprised. <clears throat> the students were expecting a lecture saying, oh, these are great things that happen in nature. I am explaining it to you. And you should be very grateful to me for explaining it to you. That is generally how popular science lectures go these days. But Arvind Kumar gives you the way around talking about crediting others, talking about uh, limitations of ideas and stuff like that. And the students were quite surprised, and one of them was my friend. So he called me up and said, you know, Arvind Kumar gave this kind of a lecture. And it so happened that a few days later, I caught Arvind Kumar while we were going for tea. And I asked him that, uh, look, this is not the kind of lecture students expect what happened. And at that time, he told me. Louder. Louder. OK. Uh, at that time, he told me that, look, man, at the end, I don't think he knew my name. He said, um, look, at the end of the day, science is a continuing enterprise. And you must make it clear to the students that it is something that is dynamic and that happens and that evolves from human mind. And you should not dehumanize science at all, because that's the worst thing you can do. And that single five minute changed my life. Because till then, I was doing physics because I was just curious about what great minds had done. Suddenly, Arvind Kumar pointed out to me um, that I also could do research. And that came as a surprise to me. And um, the rest, as they say, is history. So I joined TIFR and all that. So that was, that was a life-changing experience of just five minutes of interaction with Arvind Kumar. Then Arvind Kumar joined TIFR. I was at TIFR and lots of committees I came to. And Anvesh famously maintained that you could never win an argument against Arvind Kumar. And there were many, many committees on which I sat. I attended every one of them, hoping to be defeat Arvind Kumar at least once. I never succeeded. Arvind Kumar always managed. Because whatever objection I would raise, he would have thought about it, worked about around to it, and come out with an answer. So you were obviously helpless. You felt very foolish actually raising a point, because Arvind Kumar had already thought it through and worked it out. His meticulousness was phenomenal. His commitment to what he told to students, however casually, was phenomenal. And in many ways, that made me 
what I eventually became. So thank you very much, sir. And while others wish you good health, I would like to request you to continue to pose more interesting questions for the rest of my life. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Vaya. Professor uh, Oglapurkar. I am very fortunate to have long association with Professor Arvind Kumar for more than 20 years. Since 2001, I am coming here for OCSC Physics, RGC, PDC, and so on. So at least 50 times I have stayed in this campus for more than 200 days. So we had a lot of interaction with Professor Arvind Kumar. Before about 20 years, uh, this center has only two buildings, this main building and that uh, hostel. No other building, Olympiad facility in the US, no there. So, HBCC was short of space and uh, some programs were arranged outside. And again, I am very fortunate that two programs were arranged in Abbasab Garware College, Pune, and I was the convener of these programs. In 2002, uh, it, at that time, there was experimental component of INFO, INCO, and INBO. For all the three examinations, the experimental component was organized in Garware College in 2002. Professor Arvind Kumar was personally present there. I was looking after all the uh, uh, arrangements and so on. Uh, of course, uh, physics chemistry team, Savita Ladge and uh, Rekha Vartak and all this stuff was present there in Garware College. That was 2002. In 2003, uh, OCSC Physics was organized in Garware College. Again, uh, being head of physics department, I was the convener of that program. Entire physics team of HBCSE stayed in Pune, guest house of Garware College. Of course, Arvind Kumar, Vijay Singh, Shirish, Rajesh and others. They stayed in Pune and we carried out the program very successfully. I remember in... Uh, uh, on the last day of that uh, OCSC, uh, it was final selection. After completing three experimental tests, three theory tests, uh, results was compiled and there was selection. Present procedure of arbitration was not there at that time. And uh, there was a long discussion of selection of team uh, with marks of all the students, particularly first 10 students we, we used to discuss for each student. And our discussion went long till uh, quarter to two in the midnight. Arvind Kumar was present personally. He was looking after everything. He was looking after the list. He was taking part in the discussion. And the team was finalized by about uh, 1.45 in the late night. And next day at 7 o'clock, he was there in the Garbara College, three meters away, three kilometers away. Uh, at 7 o'clock, this shows his dedication to the work. Again, I also remember that uh, uh, maybe in 2006 or so, uh, again, the, the discussion went long. We were in his office uh, till 1.30 in the night. And he was very carefully uh, observing and finalizing the list. Very active. So, very dedicated person. I have attended some of his lectures in the earlier uh, OCSCs. Particularly, I remember uh, his lectures on special theory of relativity. Uh, excellent teacher. I, I, I have experienced that he is extremely good teacher. Also, uh, I have read some of his books. Particularly, uh, I remember his book on chaos and fractals. Uh, excellent. Very uh, difficult ideas uh, presented in a lucid manner. Very uh, different concepts presented in a very lucid manner. So, Arvind Kumar is a renowned physicist with ex exceptional command on the subject. As, an, uh, as a director of this uh, center uh, and also during NSC meetings, I have attended at least five meetings, NSC meetings under the chairmanship of uh, Arvind Kumar sir. Uh, I always observed that he is expert or 
very efficient administrator very efficient administrator he handles the chairman position in such an efficient way sometimes we are wonder struck when some unusual situation arises he handles the things in such a nice manner i talk to the archer sir only a case sir can do this sometimes so uh, in all these about 20 years uh, i never came to know how our friendship developed uh, in 2006 astronomy or impaired was hosted by hbcsc and one or two days program was in pune for uh, that ncra and again professor arvind kumar and myself we moved to different places for making the arrangements and so on <laughs> so our friendship developed a lot uh, very cooperative and uh, helping i remember twice i have used his car i re- requested him to give his car once uh, uh, i got appointment with chief minister vilasrao deshmukh uh, who was my friend in young days young ages but in 2007 or 8 uh, i got appointment with vilasrao deshmukh i didn't know how to go to balwar hill at 7 pm and return at 9 pm so i was afraid rather so i requested arvin kumar and without slightest hesitation he offered his car uh, to me and uh, i used his car right from 6 pm to 10 pm similarly in uh, ocsc pune i used his car once time so very cooperative very helping in fact i am deeply impressed by multiple facets of his personality my thousand salutes to this gallant personality so wish you a long life active life healthy life arvind kumar sir thank you sir thank you professor laputkar uh, i call uh, professor gagan gupta from ncrt Namaste everybody I am from National Council of Educational Research and Training and uh, I still remember first meeting first with Professor Arvind Kumar in 2002 I joined NCRT on 26th of April 2002 and I happened to meet Professor Arvind Kumar on 27th of April morning <laughs> and uh, since then we had a uh, like long association and uh, i am jo- i am here on behalf of my organization too today uh, this is 50th year of hbcsc as well uh, my seniors have told me uh, that uh, the association with hbcsc and ncrt uh, first came up around 1975 or so when the first set of textbooks for class 9th and 10th came up and professor vg kulkarni was associated with it so right from 1975 and then 1988 your sir your problems that which you set in 1988 uh, and that edition of book uh, was finalized somewhere around 1993 or so under the chairmanship of tv ramakrishnan i believe sir so uh, are still uh, showing light not only for the children of class 11th and 12th but also for undergraduate students and also for Uh, the competitions not only for the participants those who are taking part but also for the paper setters and uh, sir uh, a lot of has, has already been said with the association with ncrt i remember 2020 when we were in covid period and we set up a small group uh, where we were having uh, weekly uh, webinars Uh, one fine day professor avind kumar phoned me and said that uh, you are doing some job i also want to be associated with it and give me 6 months time <laughs> to speak on uh, some simple arguments in mathematics i hope you remember it sir uh, so but later uh, ncrt i started a program which is called listening to learn and that program was finally came up on pme vidya channels uh, on webinar series and where uh, this is the new program of ncrt which has been set up recently near it has been told that nearly 40000 tv channels are tuned for this program across india and some of the channels some of these programs have been telecasted in american tv channels as well uh, sir uh, i have a small souvenir for you and uh, uh, for this program uh, 
hope you will remember this program and uh, we hope that uh, you'll have a good time and good association once again with ncert and continuing association with ncert uh, and uh, hb for hbcse i must say long live hbcse and uh, we are dependent on hbcse for many reasons and uh, we are like our uh, sister organizations we work hand in hand thank you very much thank you Lights here, please. Thank you, Professor Gupta. Uh, may I call Professor K. Subramaniam, uh, former Centre Director of uh, HBCC. Thank you, Anvish. Hi, AK. It's a great pleasure to be here and to say a few words. I uh, met AK in, uh, I think, around about 1993. And uh, he, along with Professor Pradhan, HCP, both of them, and I think they were the main reason for me joining this center. Uh, some of what I say will echo what uh, Professor Pradhan said. Uh, but there's a difference. I mean, unlike Professor Pradhan, this is not the place I was looking for. I somehow found this place. And it's just because I accidentally met uh, AK and HCP. And uh, not only were they the reason for me joining the place, they were also the reason for me to stay on in this place after having wandered quite a bit. <clears throat> uh, so let me take this opportunity to express my gratitude to AK and also to HCP. Uh, I was mentored by HCP, I was supported by other colleagues like Jayashree, but I think AK gave the overall ambience and the vision which uh, directed, I think, many of our work, uh, gave it meaning and so on. I'd like to, uh, people of course know about AK's contributions to the Olympiad, to the NIS program, how he built it, founded it, and so on. Uh, but there are many other things he did to HPCSC and which make what HPCC, uh, what make HPCC what it is today. Uh, in fact, soon after uh, I joined in 94, uh, within I think three or four months, AK took over as the center director. So my period kind of initial years coincided with his taking over. And in the initial years, I think his concern was, as I understand it, to uh, give uh, a sort of a solid basis of understanding of science for all our programs, equity programs. So uh, there was this, uh, there was these fairly strange sessions which AK conceived of, which were called reading sessions, where we would sit and we would read uh, basic books in science. Of course, not uh, textbooks, but say Asimov's Guide to Science, I think, was something that we all read together. And uh, those were days where we were soaked uh, in uh, not only science, but also on uh, things like history and philosophy of science. AK took a great interest in the nature of science and its implications for science education. I'll come to that a little later. So I think his concern was, uh, he invented this phrase, I think, equity and excellence. And I think it precedes the Olympiad program, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, so I think his concern was that there should be excellence in all aspects of work. These are not different uh, dimensions or different kinds of programs at HPCSE, but that equity and excellence must underlie all these programs. So his concern was to bring deep physics understanding to every student, explains his involvement in NCRT textbooks which go out to the masses. Uh, he was equally interested and took a lot of, uh, uh, he gave a lot of support for equity programs like the Ashram Schools program, went there, interacted with teachers, took teacher uh, uh, training sessions. In fact, that's where I first saw AK in action, uh, talking to Ashram School teachers. 
I'd like to also uh, recall some landmark steps in making HPCC what it is today. Uh, of course, the, I think the initial period was this building this basic understanding of science among the whole of HPCC community. Uh, but soon after that, I think it, uh, at some point it became a national center of uh, the TIFR. I don't remember the history of that, but I assume it was through AK's uh, efforts. But what I do know is that there was a very important and momentous step which I think AK took uh, perhaps with support from other colleagues to convert, to create a faculty of science education in the center. I think till then there was no faculty of science education in TIFR. And so this was a new interdisciplinary faculty and I think he conceived of that vision and uh, making research in science education very central to that vision and uh, set up this faculty. So soon after that, in a few years, when the graduate school at TIFR, uh, TIFR became a deemed university and the graduate school was put on sound foundation, uh, science education was a separate uh, subject. It had its own uh, subject board and uh, was given uh, you know, full place along with physics, chemistry, biology, computer science, and mathematics in TIFR. Uh, <clears throat> Because the initial years, I think we were all not very sure of the status of uh, science education research. I think the center was still finding its uh, foothold uh, in how it should intervene in the larger education and science education space. Uh, but I think in very quickly, AK recognized the importance of science education research. And uh, part of it was establishing this faculty, uh, starting a strong graduate school and uh, supporting other colleagues like uh, Jayashree Ramdas in many exciting things which uh, were happening at that time, which were led by these colleagues. Uh, one of the first things I uh, remember in the center was the workshop on cognitive basis of learning. I mean, it was uh, very exciting uh, for me, uh, coming from a kind of interdisciplinary uh, training background. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, of course, there was uh, people have mentioned the Homi Baba curriculum, the Olympiads, and so on. And uh, I thought I should mention this, uh, the creation of the Faculty of Science Education and uh, setting up of the graduate school. He also uh, supported and uh, actually, I should say, initiated the Episteme series of conferences. The first one was held in Goa in 2004. And since then, I think it's been held very regularly. It's become a landmark. It's become a, a main platform for sharing science education, uh, both research and development work. Uh, <clears throat> so just before this morning, I read one of your pieces, AK, on the nature of science. I think it was written fairly recently. And it struck me that it's, uh, I mean, the clarity with which AK writes about these things is very striking. So in this, firstly, he argues about the importance of nature of science uh, for science education. Of course, this comes because of his deep interest in history and philosophy of science, uh, which was there, I think, from the very, his very early years in HBCSC. And uh, he, after making this argument that it's important, he looks at two ways in which this is done. One is through inquiry-based science learning, which is a kind of buzzword for several decades now. It's a paradigm of science teaching and learning. And another, he says, is through the history of science. And uh, he proposes both of these could be tried out. But he's also skeptical object, and as people mentioned, very objective, critical. In so he says that the evidence is not there to show that either of these actually work, but they should be tried out. And I think that's very instructive and uh, of the kind of uh, the way AK approaches things. Also, uh, for me, what is very striking and in a way, um, inspiring is that he takes these big ideas from many fields and sees its interpretation and relevance for science education. I think that's his, one of his main uh, tasks. And also his involvement in, uh, in physics education research. I mean, it continues to this day. And even here, I think he draws from the early days where he worked on alternative conceptions He's gone on to look at epistemology of uh, physics and physics learning. 
and how that plays a role in you know things which every physics student uh, experiences in college things like derivations in physics and i think there's a very nice research project uh, that they've set up so it's been altogether uh, wonderful to know ak to know about his work and to learn from him and to work in this center uh, which was led uh, by him for many years i wish him continuing a uh, fruitful and productive life and health and many more, more years i hope to see you again after some years here thank you vicky thank you professor subramaniam professor savita large dean hbcc So before I start saying something about AK, in response to Vijay Singh, uh, it was Copenhagen, Denmark, where uh, we had a bombshell fell on my shoulder about 33rd hosting. I mean, we are going to host the 33rd ICHO. Uh, that's one thing. And I think historically, if the physicist and the chemist work together, often they lead to a fruitful, you know, collaboration. History shows that. Okay. So, 33rd ICA show is one such example where the group of chemists and, uh, you know, led by a physics person, we work together. And historically, if you look at uh, the history of uh, Indian Science Olympiad, it's one of the milestone, you know. I mean, it is one of the... Um, event which basically led to rigorous standardization uh, of the Olympiad program in India. It gave boost to several things and that is something unique and just to let audience know, we have 50 years of HBCSE but this year we are also celebrating kind of, it coincides, it's 25 years of the Science Olympiad program. In fact, uh, next year, I mean physics completed this year, uh, the chemistry will be completing next year and next to next year the biology will be. So it's, it's a very nice uh, coincidence, we have 80th birthday of AK, we have 50th uh, you know, your golden jubilee for HBCSC and we have a silver jubilee for the Science Olympiad. So I thought I'll just mention that uh, just for the benefit of the audience here actually. Sir, let me wish you a very healthy life ahead and I certainly look forward to interact with in more, many more years to come. I have gained significantly from my interactions with AK and what I will do is that I will try to say things which have not been said till now because a lot has been said. So actually my interaction with AK started when uh, the Science Olympiad program started. Uh, before that I was kind of a student and to be very frank I was very scared of AK. In fact I used to avoid going to him and I always used to go to Professor Pradhan because I felt it was much easier to put my arguments. And I think there were occasions where I took Professor Pradhan to accompany me to AK's room so that, you know, I say what I can say. And I used to rehearse my argument, you know. I literally used to rehearse my argument before I go to AK's room because I was not sure what question I will get and whether I will have answer. It was like an exam, you know, going to a... <laughs> So basically, but of course, when we started interacting, uh, you know, because of the Olympiad program, slowly, uh, you know, I understood him better and then we had real good interactions. So what I will say is that this event, 33rd ICHO, in fact, helped HBCSC to grow. Uh, it helped all the individuals, and Subhan, you will agree with me actually, that it helped all individuals from HBCSC to grow. It was the first major international events which was successfully hosted by HBCSC. Okay? And what this event uh, really helped us with. Okay? So all HBCSC, all sections of HBCSC basically experienced, for the first, they got first-hand experiences about how to do meticulous planning detailing, okay, how to think about backup plans, okay, and be ready with it, how to be patient uh, when, uh, we are, when we are supposed to handle complex situations on behalf of HBCSC. And it also, you know, kind of uh, indirectly, we all understood that our actions communicate impressions about HBCSC and it is so very important to be responsible because you are kind of representing uh, HBCSC to the people and in this case it was the international audience. So that is something all of us, uh, whosoever is there, we learned uh, uh, when the 33rd International 
uh, Chemistry International Olympiad happen. Uh, everybody has spoken about AK and all of us know AK always thrives for excellence and it va he values it the most. Whatever you do, whatever small things you do, it's very important that you excel. Okay? And that is something throughout his life he has followed and he also expects, he doesn't say, but he expects that this should be done. And this is, you know, this comes across any of his activities. There are many activities which have been mentioned, whether it is a study circle in the physics or whether it's Olympiad camp or whether it is an IUS program or whether it is epistemy. So basically you should really excel. And the only way to excel is do hard work. I still remember as a research scholar, uh, one day we used to go to Dahanu tribal region and we used to have lots of school visits which used to start 6.30 in the a.m. in the morning. And by that time we used to back, it was 8 p.m. And after that we were supposed to feel all the performer only one single day. We asked Professor Arvind Kumar, sir, we want five to 10 minutes break. And he said, nothing doing. You people are research scholars. You are supposed to work for 24 hours a day. Hard work doesn't kill anybody. And then me and uh, Sugra both were very angry ki why this person doesn't understand that we just require some break. But, but now I understand <laughs> and I really know the value of hard work. And uh, sir, we have tried to do that in the kind of activities uh, which we have. I don't know, I, I'm not going to claim that we are anywhere close to the kind of work which you are put, I mean, you are still putting. But that is something uh, which we have learned, uh, you know. Uh, K.S. just mentioned about his, uh, his major contribution uh, for establishing the PhD school in science education, especially when TFR became the Deem University. There also what I, what really, I mean, even today I find it quite, uh, I mean, I have taken over as Dean and I don't know how he managed his time. I always saw if he wants to learn anything, he used to go and attend. Okay, all the graduate courses, he will make sure that he goes and attend. He contributes, he has solid discussions, and I really don't know how you manage time with the responsibility of the center directorship. And that is something, other thing which I have learned that if you have to learn something, it doesn't matter, you have to be in it actually, and you have to go and really do hard work. That is how you will gain knowledge or whatever. So that's another thing which I have, you see. The most important thing uh, about AK is that he always valued academic freedom, okay? He really respected that and he gave freedom to his colleagues. He never stopped any individual from doing what they wanted to do. There were difference of opinion, okay? I mean, it was not that there were not any difference, but that is, he never stopped anybody and it's really important uh, to understand this and respect the people's space and uh, you know, the kind of academic freedom they have. Now, one thing which I would like to say throughout his activities, especially about the Olympiad and NIUS and all that, I think what AK has tried to do is to make efforts to bring people from scientific community, that is people who are engaged with the research domain of, uh, research domain, then teachers who are people, and the stakeholders who are engaged with teaching and learning process, and young students, okay, who will take careers together on a platform for a fruitful inter interactions. And I think in Indian context where there are, uh, I mean, these stakeholders do not generally meet each other, this kind of, uh, this effort or, you know, having this kind of a forum, whether it is uh, uh, due to Olympiad or whether it is due to NIUS, and right now we are having a VP program where also this effort is going on. This is so very important. And why it is important? Because I think all these stakeholders will understand each other. They will understand the difficulties, uh, the plus minuses. And I think together they will come up with the solutions which are viable. And those solutions are so very important for science education within India. So thanks a lot, sir, for the same thing. Wishing you a healthy life again. Thank you, Professor Ladge. Professor Vandana Nanal from TIFR. It's a proud honor and pleasure to be here today. And uh, I stand here as a student of Professor Arvind Kumar. You all heard about study circle many times it was mentioned. So I had a privilege to be part of the study circle from 84 to 86. I think ours was probably the first batch. 
I still remember when he was starting it, I think he went around to different colleges. So I was studying in Ruparel College and he came and gave a lecture. It was a mesmerizing lecture. It was the first time, I think at least I felt that what you can see in physics beyond the textbook. And that motivated us and many others to join the study circle. The study circle was a really a turning point and a life-changing experience. We learnt about it. Used to, we used to go there every Thursday in Nana Chowk, in the <laughs> municipality school there, which was there. And uh, tentatively, it will start around 3 and supposed to go until 6, 6.30. But there were days it went till 7.30, if I recall correctly. And nobody looked at time. It was really a pleasure. And it was a completely different way of looking at things. He started that time with quantum mechanics. It was mostly, I think, Beiser's modern uh, physics, which you're following and learning about quantum mechanics. And uh, I'm really indebted to you because that sort of showed us that what the research can be. And uh, I'm sure, like me, many other people felt the same. Almost after 36 years, Teen Tapanantar, I had an opportunity again to st attend his quantum mechanics lectures as a part of Vigyan Vidushi course in 2020. So this is the TIFR HBCAC summer school program which we started and on the very first year we were we had to have it online. We were all daunted by teaching online but uh, Professor Arvind Kumar was maybe a bit hesitant initially but when he started teaching it was he was completely on board with online teaching and it was again a realization of his great teaching skills and all the students feedbacks over the years also when you will you will see it's unanimously that how fortunate they are to be taught by him. So really thanks for that. I must also add in Vigyan Vidushi, since the program was online, the um, interactions were virtual. So, in, so, so we had this question answer forum for students to write the questions and teachers will answer it. And among all the teachers, the one teacher who answered all the questions in detail, I don't have to tell the name, it was Professor Arvind Kumar doing that. It's in line with all the things which have been said about him. There's also one more incident I remember on the first day in the informal interaction. Some students said that uh, I can't understand English. Can you talk in Hindi? Many of us would have said, okay, not possible. It is uh, there. How many students have this problem? He just said, okay, I understand. I will try to do as much as possible in Hindi. And he did in his lectures try to bring in Hindi. I mean, this approach again is very, very characteristic of him and uh, uh, many students will vouch for this. I don't have much more to add but since uh, Professor Rangola mentioned his passion for films, I will add something which is not mentioned but many of you will know he is a father of an actor. His son was acted in, in uh, late 70s, there was a very famous Marathi serial Chiman Rao Gundyabho. His son has done the role of uh, Chiman Rao's son in, in that. So that's also his another thing. So um, thank you very much for all that you taught us and wish you a very happy life. Right? Thank you, Professor Nanal. Professor Ravi Bhattacharji. Thank you, Vicky. Uh, we've heard a lot about you, learned a lot about you today. But I'm here to express my personal gratitude uh, for having met you, which was a very decisive moment in my career, and it changed the way that I worked. And I, let me be a little bit more explicit. I had come in uh, sometime in February 1998 to conduct a workshop on low-cost instruments in the chemistry department invited by Professor S.C. Agar Agarkar. And in the valedictory function, <coughs> uh, we were having tea, and I met, uh, I mean, uh, Professor, he was the center director. Obviously, we are having tea with the center director. And uh, he asked me, what do you teach? And I said, right now, I'm teaching quantum mechanics and uh, electricity magnetism, electrodynamics. I said, why don't you come for the Olympiad program? I didn't know anything about the Olympiad program, right? Uh, out of the blue, he told, says that to me. And ever since that, my career has changed. Because 
1998, when we started all this program, as Vijay pointed out, making this thematic problems was itself a research. I spent most of my time, you know, uh, apart from teaching and things like that, <clears throat> researching on how to make a good, real good thematic problem. So, and I remember that in those good old days, uh, the resource generation camps uh, were a handful of people. Uh, it was a very small club, and we met in uh, Professor uh, Arvind Kumar's room, AK's room upstairs. Two days of grueling things, challenging problems, and you know, being very careful that the problem is good enough so that AK really, you know, uh, does not crush it down. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, <clears throat> but the best part of it was <clears throat> after the two grueling days of RGC, okay, it was a nice evening in, uh, uh, what was it called? Invitation, right? Celebration. Ah, celebration. <laughs> it was a nice evening in celebration. Celebration no longer exists. It's called uh, Mama's, Grandma's Cafe. And I make it a point to go to Grandma's Cafe for the sake of old times every time I'm in Bombay. So thank you again, AK. Thank you very much for getting me into this problem, uh, in, into this program. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's called a slip of the tongue, right? <laughs> Doesn't mean much. <laughs> uh, but getting into this program, and ever since 1998, I have been here and still trying to make some challenging pro problems. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Bhattacharji. So, uh, of course, uh, I think it's getting quite late and everybody is waiting to hear from uh, Professor Avind Kumar. But if anybody else would like to say within one or two minutes anything. Okay. Otherwise, uh, I would invite Professor Avind Kumar to. Uh, uh, say uh, a few words, whatever, and we will end the program with that. So, uh, uh, we'll put a chair for you. Shall we put a chair for you? That will be better. Yeah, they'll, they'll bring in a chair. Yeah, but you can come. Yeah, yeah, please. Sit here. Uh, just a moment. Put a collar mic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can you switch this off and put a collar mic? <coughs> yes. Can you? Hello, so you can hear me? Yeah. Yeah, first of all, thank you, Anvesh, Mashud, and Arnav for organizing this wonderful symposium and the felicitation function at the end. First of all, greetings and uh, Thanks to all the participants and speakers of the symposium, this three-day symposium, which unfortunately I could not attend. So, thank you all the speakers at the symposium. For this afternoon session, of, of course, I am very grateful to all the speakers, so many of them distinguished speakers and all of them distinguished, but some of them are very close friends and colleagues. For giving me compliments and tributes, I enjoyed many of them very much. And I really do not know 
how to respond to those numerous tri tributes. So all I can accept, I can do is to assume that those tributes were more a matter of affection than, than anything very substantially true. So, and, uh, but whatever it is, I accept all the tributes in all my humility. On this occasion, I want to thank <coughs> the numerous people in my life who have guided and supported me throughout the various stages. I have now completed eight dec decades of life. So, so the, through the various decades of my life, I would like to thank. Of course, I will not start from all over the beginning. Uh, this is going to be a very long list, so for lack of time and because of the fact that some names may not relate to you, I will be trimming that list and uh, I will be reducing it. In this process of tri trimming it, I might omit some names just out of memory loss, I might, might have just forgotten. So before I start my apologies for any in, inadvertent omissions. But before I give you that list of people uh, whom I want to express my gratitude to, I, I just want to say a few remarks. Now, well, as the, you know, all the wise people in the world have always said that our life is a product of chance and necessity. I think it's quite a famous phrase, chance and necessity. What is this? I mean, Something happens to us by chance and then we, our life takes a certain trajectory. Another chance happens on that trajectory. There are many branches to the trajectories, but one chance when you get along another branch of the trajectory. Yet another chance, yet another branch of the trajectory. I think it's current complexity theory, if I understand it right, of physics. That is what sometimes say that there are bifurcations happening. It's, the analogy is not perfect, but that's something like that. And then those bifurcations, it's more chance than anything you... Once you are on the trajectory, of course, the necessary laws of nature take you over. So like anybody else, my life also has been a product of numerous chances and necessities. So many that obviously I cannot recount all of them here. But I want to recount just two chances of my life. One right at the beginning of my life, when I was a school student. And one right at the end of, very near the end of my career. At school I was immensely fond of languages. In the, in our time in Delhi, of course there was no Marathi there, it was Hindi, English and Sanskrit. I was very passionately fond. I was actually fond of nothing else but the, those languages. But unfortunately for me, for some reason I do not know, I also scored well in science and maths. 
I said unfortunately because once you score well in science and maths, the writing is on the wall, I mean in the family. So my father dismissed any fancy ideas of my going to the other branch and said, no, nothing doing, you have to do, you have to do science. These are very old times, 50 years, there was no such thing that asking, asking your wards what you want to do, etc. <laughs> those concepts didn't exist in those, in those times. So I had to, uh, if you know about Delhi system, you had to do this branching rather early in my life, in your life. It's not after 10th, it used to be a little earlier. Those were the times of Delhi higher secondary school, so called. Anyway, I mean if, for example, if chance had me taken me to the other branch, all things being equal, this function might have been held in department of Hindi, Sanskrit or, or English of Hansraj College or some such college in Delhi. So how, how important is this chance, you know, the whole, whole life changes. Anyway, it didn't happen. I branched to science and uh, here I am the so-called physics educationist, etc., etc. That was one chance. I'll now fast forward because to 50 years later, this first chance was must have been 1953 or so, or 55, something like that. The second chance, Phone, mobile phone. Your mobile phone, can you take it out, creating some disturbance? Mobile phone? Yeah, just escape. Just escape, yeah. Fast forward 50 years, I think it was around 2003. HBCC was in full swing, you know, Olympiads conferences, as Ravi said, you know, the graduate school, the various courses in science education, Olympiads, everything was in full swing. There didn't have to be any chance occurrence, I mean, it could have been, it could have just gone on. But, I remember that day distinctly. One day I was sitting in Professor Shobha Bhattachari, then, then Director TIFR, his room, you know, for some HBCAC routine matters. HBCAC director often goes there every month or two just to brief the director TIFR. I got finished with those routine matters and then he, he said, he, he stopped me and he said, Arvind, I want to say something to you. I said, what? He said, Arvind, I am getting a feeling in the scientific and educational circles in India that something is to be done at the undergraduate stage. We have this very first rate premier institutes in the country for higher level, graduate schools and so on. Some of the top, TIFR itself being one, but, but many other, IISC, IITs and so on. They are excellent graduate schools. Also a lot of work is being done by NCRT on higher secondary and now you have also started something at that level, 
the Olympiads, etc. etc. But there is something missing at the undergraduate level, a substantial thing. Of course, there have always been some efforts, but some very substantial thing needs to be done at the UG level. And he said it quite, it was it's not a casual remark, it's quite serious. And he said, why don't you think about it? So I said, okay, I will think about it. I came back more as usual, brought me back to HVCC. And his remarks started set me thinking as to what to do. It was clear that I had to do something. And as somebody pointed out, I think Anvesh or somebody else, that once I get an idea, then until that idea gets out of mind and gets translated into something, I just cannot rest. So there was one or probably two weeks of intense thinking, sometimes consulting Professor Pradhan, but usually I was thinking on my own. <clears throat> and the only person who was knew was Sumanna, who knew that this, this guy is thinking about something. And in those days, there was no, at least I was not very, uh, you know, so, familiar with computer typing and so on. So, my style was paper writing. So, I spent 10 days drafting up the NIOS proposal and then of course I asked her to type it out. So, that's part of the chance that somebody triggering me to do that. But you can always write a highly great sounding proposal Writing a proposal is no big deal. It's the easy part of it. HBCAC is very fortunate that the proposal, as soon as it was known to director TIA, for anyway, he had dragged it, so he liked it. But the then decision maker, Professor, Kakodkar. Actually, when I was writing that proposal, I, was, I thought, am I daydreaming or what? Because it, it was quite a substantial proposal, inviting, you know, asking for buildings and this and that. And it's not an easy job to ask government. And it was mid, mid, uh, mid-term plan. So it's not easy to get money, uh, let alone infrastructure, etc. Anyway, to the great chance, Chairman D, D not only liked the proposal, I mean, or approved the proposal, those are very small words. He got so enthused about it, which actually surprised me. I mean, he's, yeah, I was very happy he's approving it, but he was proactively. Uh, excited about it, just as I was excited in writing it. So, I mean, Professor Shobo had caught the right, right vibrations going on in the government of India. You know, the TIFR director goes to various, is always in apex committees, so uh, the director knows what, what is the feeling. That was, this feeling four years later was to translate into these big things called ICERs, NICER, it's, it was just this feeling that undergraduate level something had to be done. But this was four years ago. That is the, that was the chance. If this had come seven years, uh, at VCAC would not have got this proposal. It came four years earlier, that time there was a vacuum and NIUS filled that vacuum. 
thanks to the <coughs> tremendous support of Dr. Kakaroka. So NIUS is a product of two chances. One, an important person triggering it. The other, the, of course, the most vital, important person in the chain, feeling not only supportive about it, but proactively taking it forward and getting it, getting it done. So these are the chances I, I wanted to say. There are many others. I, of course, as somebody pointed out, once the NIUS and the earlier Olympiads gave HBCSC new infrastructure, then of course it was open for all programs. It doesn't restrict to the infrastructure. Twenty years from now, maybe or thirty years from now, NIUS may take some other shape. Olympiads may take some other shape, but the buildings will still be there. And they can always we can one can think of. So it it will it's all to the imagination of HBCC new generation how to make use of that. For example, the latest Vigyan Videshi, which somebody Nanal pointed out. We did, we did not think when an NIUS Vigyan Videshi program, but it came and it the NIUS infrastructure is just the right structure for Vigyan Vidushi. Yeah. Also because of the labs, the labs, we got the labs which are advanced and so on. And that is what I meant by saying that life or institution's life itself is a product of chance and necessity. I think I can go on and on on this theme of chance and necessity, so let me just before I close, no words are adequate to thank Professor Shobo, Bhattacharya, and Dr. Kakodukar for, for what they have done to HVCC. I, I was only talking of chance, I am not talking of HVCC, all activities, etc. They are, of course, very nice spectrum of activities on equity and excellence and all that. But this is not the occasion to talk of. Now I come back to uh, thanking people, expressing my attitude. Then since there are too many, I have to make some criteria. The best criteria is Indian tradition. First pay your respects to the elders and then come to colleagues and so on. I am grateful to Professor Virin Singh, my, and I will start from TIFR days, otherwise it can take any time. So, I will start from TIFR early days. I am grateful to Professor Virin Singh, my PhD guide, Professor Udgaukar, my mentor. But there were many other colleagues, senior colleagues, Professor L.K. Pandit, Professor N. Mukunda, Raj Shekran, S.S. Jhar, D.P. Roy, and S.M. Roy and several others, I might be forgetting some names. It is these people from whom I learned theoretical physics. Of course, the, all of these that I named, they have become giants in their own fields, etc. But I picked up what modern you know, science education people call the epistemology. The epistemology of theoretical physics. I didn't do great theoretical physics, but I got the epistemology of theoretical physics. What is, what is done in theoretical physics? What do you mean by doing research in theoretical physics? That is called epistemology, and these epistemic inputs are more, most important. I got these from that, but I was into teaching because that was my for whatever reasons, the basic imp impulse. I went to UDP. UDP, the elders, 
there were not too many, so there were two very elders or youngers, etc. Professor M. C. Zoshi, I would like to pay my respectful tributes to him. Uh, and of course, Professor Abbas Rangwala, who was my elder there, and from whom over 10 years I learned too many things to enumerate. And this was a different kind of learning because theoretical physics research is a different thing. Here also we were doing research, but our main job was uh, teaching. So, I mean, you know, going after, working out one textbook after another. Fortunately, another chance. Professor Rangwala has the same temperament as me, namely that we all both like teaching and we all both working out in detail and you know giving long long classes it's we we coincide i mean we have this it's again a chance because sometimes what happens in some faculties you get a course and then they then you have to just do that course all your life because people have people are sort of you know fix their courses and you can't go. But in, in this university, one year I would teach quantum engineering, next year Abbas would teach, next year I would teach electrodynamics, next year he would teach. This was a fantastic experience. Why I call my UDP experience is because of this. If I were to teach only one subject uh, for 11 years, that would not have been and educative because after two, three years you get bold, bold by that course and you just teach what you already know. But this was one course after another. So there were some ten, all the core courses, name any core course, we both taught, name any topical course except for one or two. I still miss solid state physics because <laughs> that, that had got sort of controlled by somewhere, so I, I, we didn't get it. I wish I'd, I had opportunity to teach solid state physics and electronics anyway is my weak point, so I didn't teach that. But apart from that, I'm nuclear physics, what did, what did I have to do? I mean, I had, I was a particle physicist, nuclear physics is an altogether different discipline. But here was this Deschelitten flashback and we poured over it, every page of it, taught it for two years, then, then atomic and molecular physics, then laser physics, all sorts of things. So I think it was enormously useful and I am grateful to Professor Abbas who, who was my compatriot in this learning. <coughs> I move on to, uh, there is also Ch Chetan Mehta, I just want to remember him. He was also one of the people. I come to Homiva Centre quickly. As far as the elders are concerned, it's Professor Vijay, Vijay Kulkarni, Udgaukar, Professor Lagu, Professor Bhagavat. Otherwise, the rest of them are all younger than me, so I can't say them. I was the eldest there. So, these are Homiva Centre. Uh, people and then CBS again I met Professor Chatre who was ref definitely senior and I want to pay my respectful tributes to him and Professor Hosur Mathur although they were younger in the role they were bigger they were directors of the Center for Basic Sciences Mathur and the current director uh, Dr. J. N. etc. I am very grateful to them that they are they were very courteous to me and so on. I come back to my 14 years of centre directorship at Homi Bhava Centre. <coughs> you see, first of all, I will tell you that HBCAC thinks won't go smooth unless the HBCC director has good contacts with TI for directors. 
I was extremely fortunate in having excellent rapport, almost friendly with TFR directors, starting from Professor Viren Singh, who was anyway my guide, Professor Jha, who might be director but actually was my old friend at, at TFR. Uh, uh, yeah. Then Professor Shobo, I have already mentioned. And uh, then after Pro Pro Professor Shobo, who was that? Uh, uh, Professor Mustansen Barma. Yeah, Shobo was 2002. I, although I was there only for a year with Mustansen Barma, he was also very kind. I'm grateful to all of them. But not only when I was there as a center director, after my directorship, I had nothing to do with TIFR directors after, after I retired. But sometimes one does go to TIFR. And I have always got extremely good kindness and courtesy by the succeeding successive directors after Mutsan Singh, of course, Ramki and Sandeep Trivedi and of course the current director. I was very honored that he came to this function. He's very recent and I, I, have, seen, I have talked to him only twice, but two or three on this few occasions I talk, he's extremely courteous to me, so I thank them all very much. I, can, I should express my deep gratitude to Dr. Chidambaram, uh, Kak, Dr. Kakorkar, I have said. There was all another person, Dr. Rama Rao, who for some reasons had taken a liking for me and then the proposals with BRNS, it's all used to went, go through so smoothly, there was never any problem. I come back to my junior, as center director, of course, Professor Pradhan, and Professor Vijay Singh were my, you know, the dean as well as Vijay Singh came a little later, but nevertheless, he was national. Officer. It is these people who who ran the center. I was only there nominally, and I am very grateful to them to take so much of responsibility. People, somebody told me, how could I do this, or I could. Do I could do this because these two people were there, etc. I must acknowledge administrative support of PR Fadnavis and Madhavi Light only. I believe that, uh, although maybe not TF of philosophy, at least HBCIC is a very close knit institution. There is not much difference between academic, scientific, and this, there is no difference, which is a very, an extremely good feature of the VCC. So, Pierre Fadnavis and, and our important, most important person, I used to call him of the center, P.P. Rahul, that because without his signature, nothing can, can, can happen. So, our accountant, P.P. Rahul, they were very kind to me. And they, I don't know. This was about management, but academically also, I learned a great deal from, of course, my colleague Pradhan, who is a very, very capable person in many, many different fields, including maths and uh, physics and so many things. He's a real broad, general scholar, and there's so much to learn from him. But I learned from my younger colleagues. I, starting from Agarka, Gambhir, and even Ghaisas, when, when we used to go to our trips. Shrish Barve, he was younger, I so regretted that he left the center. But after many years I saw him, I was so glad. Jay Sharif, who actually introduced me to physics education research, Sugra, is who gave different dimensions. These social dimensions I did not bother during my UDP period. I was not 
into these so social dimensions, but she made me aware of these dimensions. Subramanyam and Nag Nagarjuna, Chitra, B.S. Mahajan, Jyotsana, Rajesh, all of these I, I learned, I mean, because it has been such a long, it was a long period of 14 years and I was interacting sometime or the other with all of them, etc. So I learned a great deal. You can only say that I am a good student. I mean, I pick up, if somebody tells me, I try to learn it. I want to particularly acknowledge K.S. Is he there? K. Uh, so, yeah, Subramanyam and Nagarjuna, I think, is not there. These people oriented me into philosophy, philosophy of science. So now I doubt myself as, as, as a philosopher of science of sorts. Actually, I, I am, my main roots are only in physics. But I really got, I think I, my intellectual enrichment was much strengthened because of KS and Jain, because I learned what is it, just as I, as I told you, one has to learn what is it that is called theoretical physics. Similarly, what is it that is called philosophy of science? People have naive ideas about what it all means. So from that naive to, to something more subtle, not as subtle as they know it, but uh, I got to know philosophy of science. To the extent I had the courage to even give a course on philosophy of science. <laughs> so uh, that's my usual technique. If I want to work hard, then I just take up that subject. So philosophy of science, learning theories, cognitive development, education, etc. These are not my topics at all. I've never been trained in these topics. But I said, why not? I mean, just let's just, there are some very good colleagues here. Let me, and the usual, my usual pet, pattern, take a book and just saw, just read it, read it, read it. And that's how I uh, uh, learned some of these things. I'm very, very happy that I'm not a typical hard-nosed physicist, uh, which I would have remained if I was only in the physics section. But my hard-nosed physics character, <laughs> sort of broaden to include these very intellectual horizons of behavioral science, which I must say most scientists are not aware of. And so I am very happy and I am very privileged to be, uh, yeah. Rekha, I don't know if she is there. I had really, are you there Rekha? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah. I mean, I have a very special report for God reasons, what reason, uh, for, uh, reasons, but I had a very special report. I used to discuss with her, though I don't know any, that is one subject I have, I still could not um, master. Not only master, I could not, I did not know that. Vijay Singh has been talking about it. I think it has been one of the most exciting periods of my life, the most cherished period, if I want to reminisce about my academic things. And that was those nine, few years of 1998 to 2001. Later Olympiads became a pain and then too much of this thing. But those three, four years, it was not so much pain. And uh, it was just, you know, designing problems, designing the problems. He related very nice incidents about it, etc. But I, Vijay Singh and occasionally Sanjay, uh, Sunil Dutta, yeah, Dutta, yeah, yeah. But mostly two of us, the excitement of it, it was almost as, as novel as doing research. I would say even better than that because Doing research, you have a you have pressure whether, whether you will, somebody will publish it or not, and all sorts of pressures. 
But this Olympiad designing problem is the most blissful activity because it's very challenging, very demanding. It knows it needs a lot of subject expertise. If you don't have, you have to read it and then uh, you have to design it in such a manner. Not only it is uh, very demanding, it is also accessible. These requirements are not simple requirement. People underestimate the importance of the time that is needed for Olympiad design. It's not that you uh, formulate a problem. These are the brightest people on the planet. And how do you, you can't have a standard problem. IIT JE problem is no model for, for Olympiad problems. It's of the different kind. You have to design it, but you can't go outside the syllabus. It's very easy to de design very difficult problems, go take up a book of Jackson and write, a, write down a problem. It's not that way. The technique we found was read Jackson, read Schaeff, read reactor physics, read this, read that, and water it down. That was, now I'm giving you the trade secret of how, how to design an Olympiad problem. So, so, the Dirac monopolo problem was that way. We first read the sections from Dirac, but you cannot write Dirac. Dirac is a graduate level, uh, uh, sorry, Jackson is a graduate level book. How to bring it down here? The other requirement, it should be accessible. You know, it should be examinable, there should be clear cut marks and so on. This is a fantastic exercise, provided there is not too much stress on it. And now I am told nowadays it is very stressful, etc. But we, we found this period stress free and the most academically interesting period of my life. So thanks Vijay for those that very happy period, the most period I cherish most in my life. <coughs> anyway, uh, there are many other, I, I, in my naming all the individuals, I, have, I must have, I am sure I have forgotten many, many people. Please forgive me. I don't mean to uh, ignore anybody, but just some names might have gone. Some new very bright people have come to the center. I have not had much interaction. Ankush, Deepa, Sanjay. Sanjay is one person. I don't know if he is there, uh, but uh, his fantastic, his, his depth of cognitive science is incredible. And whenever I listen to him, whatever he says, I find this is something, oh, this is not something trivial. This is something that, that sort of thing that I get from Sanjay, I, I don't know is there. So these are my academic, I am going to my younger colleagues in a moment, I mean, uh, but before that, let me formally also thank the succeeding center directors, deans, etc. It's a formality, but I must go through Pr Professor Pradhan, Ramdas, Subramanyam, and now I don't need to be formal, but Arna, you are the director, and I'm, I should thank you for uh, for all the courtesy that post retirement I'm getting, and all the deans later, uh, the lead Jay Shri Ramdas, Chitra Natrajan and then Sugra Chanavala and Savita Ladge, etc. So, uh, my formal thanks for when I come now post-retirement to NBCSC, I am so warmly welcomed. So, thank you all very much. <coughs> and of course, the center directors, uh, I am sorry, the national coordinators. I should not take Anvesh, I mean the center he is quite an important person now in, in this, but because he, 
because of the age, I forget it sometimes. And uh, so these national coordinators, Professor Vijay Singh and Professor Anvish Majumdar, so all the central directors, deans and national coordinators, post my retirement, thank you all very much. <coughs> uh, I also want to write Prithviji Sain, if, he, if he's there. He is now the National College of Maths Olympiad. So, he is also very nice to me when I come here. Now, one organization, I will just go outside. I have just, I will just spend just two more, uh, I mean, ten, five, ten minutes more. One organization that works hand in hand with HBCC is IAPT. Uh, and I thank Professor Dharkar. Professor Dharkar, sadly no more, Professor Oglapurkar, Professor Alu Alia, and there have been numerous IAPT members. And uh, I'm very good. Without IAPT, HBCC alone cannot do the Olympiads. It's IAPT, HBCC effort, and that's the way it has been going on. So thanks you, all IAPT members, all of them. I may not take their names, but thank you all very much. Also, there was Dr. Prabhu of Indian Association of Chemistry Teachers at Professor Satyamurthy mentioned. Dr. Kale, Indian Association of Bi they have been named something else, but I call them Indian Association of Biology Teachers, uh, Dr. Kale, and so on. Uh, and with these chemistry and bio olympiads, I came to know some very distinguished people who are not physicists but chemists and biologists. So that is like, that's another great uh, advantage of being at HBCC uh, because otherwise in physics you just remain with physicists, etc. You don't even know. Uh, Professor Satyamurthy, Professor Gadre, Professor Uday Maitra, they were all members of the International Chemistry and Theory. Professor Madan Chaturvedi is a very capable person and it has been a great fortune of HBCC that such, such brilliant people have also found it interesting to come to HBCC. I mean, they are giants in their own fields, but they come to HBCC and, and all this Olympiad problem solving or international bio Olympiads. So I have come in contact with some of them. So my gratitude to all of them, all these people. Uh, now I, I want to say that of most, my most special mention is Raja Ram Nityanand. I had known his fame had travelled before, travelled to me before I saw him. I had known from 1980s or something that there is a guy at Raman Research Institute. He is really, really good. I had heard this, but I did not have the fortune to have seen him. But eventually I saw him in CRT books and then this Astronomy Olympiads and etc. And well, I, I cannot tell you what he is. And Raja Ram is my role model in, as far as physics is concerned. Uh, you know, great physicists, they don't look different, <laughs> they are something similar. So, <laughs> so, he may look like one, all of us, but he is a great physicist. His, uh, his knowledge of physics, I mean, people are uh, appreciating me, that's, that's all just textbook, uh, but the real depth, you know, it's, it's difficult to describe what that is, so I won't try to try it. His depth and breadth of understanding of physics and the facility with which he goes from one subject to another and so on. Uh, I can only aspire uh, in the remaining years that I have. I, I'm just trying to see if, if I can be, you know, it's the mathematical notion of limit, 
can I approach <laughs> approach that or so thank you Rajaram and not only for of course that is that's great but also being very very cooperative and very nice to me during this astronomy Olympiad and your friendship I mean he's he became my friend uh, for many years and so it's one of my cherished achievements of life to have got uh, have been friendly with Rajaram. Returning to the astronomy Olympiad we had a uh, see what happens is this astronomy thing astrophysics I can possibly manage but this business of observational astronomy is something is I am not too good at it not too good not good at all but so observational astronomy and when this Olympiad was happening I was looking for some person to help me because I could not have kept on on this and Professor Vaya was there but he is in TIFR and but I, I always like to keep things under my thing that if, if I am uh, in the committee for astronomy element I should know it properly and I was finding it hard uh, so it was a godsend for me this very young entrant at that time very young and even now very young uh, Aniket Sule he came just at it was real godsend I was looking for it I was getting tense and there was Aniket Sule <laughs> right in front of the desk he said I said where are you I mean he said no yeah, I just returned from Germany uh, I think he did his PhD in Germany he was there and I knew from his early experience that he is a bright boy I said just come along you have to be part of HBCC and uh, that's why Aniket it's Aniket Sule who saved me from <laughs> International Astronomy Olympiad and of course Professor Vaya uh, has always been there Vaya is not just about Astronomy Olympiad Vaya has been my friend from 1970s he was one of the students who would come and gossip with pro professors <laughs> generally generally professors gossip among themselves or students gossip among themselves <laughs> but here is a guy who would come to a bathroom <laughs> and I would be there and he would be gossiping with us so he has been friend since then where is he Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, he is very good in a variety of fields and we have been often wanting to work together but he is just, he's just too busy a man like that is just too busy with this and that we have been wanting to write a write book and so on but time passed the pandemic came and so on it was before the pandemic uh, we were thinking of writing something the uh, what was it the glimpses of science no flavor of flavor of science <laughs> and, but unfortunately that flavor um, remained you know un unimplemented etc but anyway thanks Vaya and Vaya has has been not only my friend has been a friend of HBCAC you have any HBCAC program conference Goa conference today he is there to help you, etc. So he is a sort of quasi HVCAC person. No, I am not sure where he exactly belonged. Did he belong to TIFR or was it HVCAC? <laughs> but that is. So thanks, Vaya, for and for your recent invitation last year for this summarizing. That, by the way, was quite painful because I took took three months to <laughs> to re review. At VCAC, I mean that was too late a time for me to do, but for his sake I did that. Okay, so thanks, Aya. Uh, Paresh Soshi actually joined just around the time I saw. I don't know, but I know Paresh Soshi by some other route, etc. Uh, and he he came close to me. I could not interact with him. I have known him for long otherwise. 
He has always been very kind and courteous whenever I come here. So thank you, Vahiya, again. Thank you, Aniket. Thank you, Paresh, for this. Now, while I am on HBCS, I must acknowledge the help of some younger friends. See, I talked of my academic colleagues. There are too many of them, and they all came spontaneously here to stand with me. Meena, who is, whom I should call a, my young friend for a long time, and Lale Deshmukh of Integrated Lab, we have been together. Uh, Shirish is always there. Uh, I want to also name Indrani. She is a soft-spoken person. Oh, she is there, yeah. She never, she is very self-effacing. She does all the work, but she keeps behind. She is a wonderful resource for Chemistry Olympiad. And was also a ready help for me when I was in, used to sit in the po this post-retirement. Uh, I was working with Savita sometime. So it was Savita uh, Indrani who helped me tremendously. Uh, Anupama is there. Well, I don't know if she is there. Anupama? Oh, you are there. Good, good. And many other people, please forgive me. I, the younger, the more recent ones who, who came after retirement, I know them, but I don't remember their names etc. And uh, Shweta, uh, Shweta, yeah, I have known her for a long time. She is excellent in maths, etc. I had been wanting, I mean, she impressed some maths faculty when they came here. So very well known mathematics educators. She went there and uh, I have been associated with her a long time. And finally, Manoj, who is Manoj? Uh, oh, yeah, he did. <laughs> so Manoj, he is an amazing person. It is difficult to describe who <laughs> what is. So I won't say. He is an amazing artist, amazingly creative. Lot of creativity uh, that you see in HBCAC, uh, various things. It is it's Manoj etc. And very, very, very nice, nice man just, just to be there. I would also like to, there are some behind the sign scenes people who have helped me all my life. In fact, without that nothing would have happened. I talked about NIU's proposal, but that would have been only on my papers. But uh, there had to be some people to help me and etc. And the person who has been my help throughout, after the, from 1994, after retirement, not only retirement, after that, I take her for granted, take her for granted, and if there is some work, I just call her and say, Somana, you do this, and Somana, you do that. So, Somana has been my most closest confidant, you can, you can say, and I, and I tell her just about everything. This, this one person, apart from my children, that I take for granted is Somana. And Gajanan is a universal, new useful person, not only for my, but he's always there when I this. Smita, she has now resigned, but I think. Sandhya Pednekar, they are my very, very good. Uh, even now, I make use of them. When I go to the library, I'm very lazy looking for books. I have to just tell Sandhya or Pednekar, I need this book. And they just get me in, in two minutes, etc. So thank you all very much. I might have missed some many important names. Please forgive me, etc. Now I should mention Kagan Gupta is there. Please forgive me for five, ten, Five minutes, just says another a few um, lines. I enjoyed a tremendous rapport with NCRT people too, too, so much so that I, was, I have now been put in a committee <laughs> which I should not have been put. I'm just too old for such heavy work that's now going to come to NBCSC. 
but I got, God knows what. Some of this, I think the culprits must have been some of these NC <laughs> friends who, who must have recommended my name there. And uh, uh, so, anyway, 20 years ago, we had a very, very nice uh, friendship with B.K. Sharma, V.P. Srivastava, Gagan Gupta, Hukum Singh, all very dear to me. And I very, very much cherish my visits to NCRT. Actually, NCRT, apart from, of course, these book visits and great things. You see, Delhi is a place. I grew up in Delhi, as you heard. I always miss some of its snacks. I you see, Mumbai snacks are no match for... <laughs> So whenever I went there, I used to do the farmaish ki bhi mujhe bread pakoda. Bread pakoda is a dish there. Bread pakoda chahiye mujhe. <laughs> so <laughs> these people would from somewhere get such tasty bread pakoda. And once they knew that Arvind Kumar likes it, every meeting that I in that bread pakoda would be there. So. Uh, and various things and they know that I have uh, you know I have taste for especially food from Delhi Delhi food is fantastic and I keep teasing my Mumbai friends that you you guys don't know how to <laughs> how to prepare food and so still I I enjoy it but now now it's too late for me to enjoy a bread pakoda and all that. <coughs> uh, numerous people at AES, Anushakti Nagar, Nehru Science Center, Mumbai, Marathi Vidyan Parishad, many other organizations. I'll not name numerous friends, the time is getting uh, late. But uh, I would like to thank Sri A.P. Deshpande. Is he still there? I mean, A.P. Deshpande FMB for inviting me to be the president of Akhil Bharatiya Marathi Adivation at Vani, etc. It was wonderful. And all these people, particularly my HBCC colleagues, you see, till, till although I, my mother tongue is Marathi, I, my preferent, preferred language is always Hindi, but it is these guys who, who introduced me, Agarkar, Gambhir, etc. So that now I am reasonably good in my own mother tongue. Uh, though nowhere compared to Professor Pradhan or somebody else, but still I can manage. <coughs> uh, so I am very thankful to all of them. I want to thank Pratibha Jolly. I met her two decades ago. And since then, she has been an important resource person for physics education research. Whenever I, I have some query about this, as to who is the right person for this or who is the nine, she is there. She has international. She was, she was chair ICP 2005, and she very kindly agreed to contribute to uh, physics education, that special news, which was very nice. Uh, thing and from I, I think ICP 2005 yeah ICP she organized so nicely in Delhi it was it was a uh, real model of how nicely an international conference can be uh, done and I hope I, IPT and other people are organizing at Chandigarh now I hope it's it meets the same standards as what she did in ICP 2000, and I gave a talk there, etc., uh, etc. Et so I have very good memories of uh, Pratibha Jolly. As far the physics news issue is concerned, Professor Aluwalia, Professor Sapna Sharma, thank you very much for all your help, etc. I am now coming near the end, but I cannot leave my... You must have noticed that the most important part of my life I have missed, and that is my students. But they are so numerous, so how can I name so many of them? There are hundreds and 
I don't know how many of them. So I will only end by naming my PhD students, uh, some of whom who take. Uh, so my PhD supervision has is very peculiar. I mean, I don't think there is any, I mean, there must be a few parallels. What I do is some student comes along and says, he or she is interested in this topic. I, uh, I was in particle physics, but I say, okay, you are interested, in, let's, let's do this. And then I start working with the student and learning that subject and doing PhD thing. Next student comes, no, no, I am not interested in that, I am interested in this. Okay, why not? So I, <laughs> I go to that subject. This is, this is the way, it's a very peculiar way. Not if you are wanting to become great professional physicist, don't, don't adopt this pattern. But I think for a physics teacher, I was destined to be a education, so-called educational, but physics teacher. This is a good thing because then you get get to know various subjects and your epistemology is never clear unless you do some research. No matter, the research may not be earth shaking, but the fact that you are doing research improves your epistemic understanding of physics, etc. So that, that is, so, so this pattern was suited me, it will not suit an aspiring physicist who wants to become a great professional physicists, it's a, but for physics education, it's, it's good. So one day, you know, when I was in 1970s, Bala Iyer came and he said, from BSc days, he is interested in general relativity. Now in those days, general relativity was not, he was regarded as an esoteric subject. This current uh, general relativity and particle physics convergence, that had not arrived in that day. It was not something particle physicists knew actually. I am talking of 19, early 1970s. He said, no, from BSc, I am interested. I said, why not? Let's go. And he, he related to you, so I won't repeat. We read those books which were meant for, uh, for general relativity. It was a very productive uh, collaboration. It was, very, it was an exhilarating experience to have worked on quantum black hole physics. Um, originally coming from particle physics background. Next, next year, a lady came and she said, "No, no, I am. I this general relativity is too much for me. I mean, I am more into earthy subjects like optics or atomic physics." I said, "Why not? Let's go to there." So I did atomic physics, uh, optical physics, a subject called coherent transients, and it was, it was. Just learning together something and producing some research and sources. I joined Homi Baba Center. There was a student. Has Manjusha come today? Manjusha Deshpande. She was, she was going to come. Anyway, she was a bit mathematically oriented student. And I, at Homi Baba Center, what, what will I do? Uh, at, uh, I was yearning to do some maths and, you know, some kind of theoretical, theoretical thing. So in disguise of theoretical physics, I actually do, did mathematical modeling of educational processes, which was, I mean, what is theoretical physics? Applying mathematics to some system. This was ma applying mathematics to an education system. So we made this. That also was a productive collaboration in some Journal is called Journal of Mathematical Sociology. So it's all very strange, you know, some particle physicist publishing in Journal of Mathematical Sociology and so on. But I, this is because of this pattern of this. Anyway, Jayashri taught me this PER, etc. Meanwhile, I never kept out of interest with, uh, touch with physics. And there was this friend Sudhir Panse. He had some new ideas on thermodynamics of partially coincident cycles, etc. And he came to me, he, has, he had a lot of friendship and respect for me and said, shall we think about it? I said, yeah, you can, you think about it, I will be engaged with you. 
so basically he was not my student but he uh, i was quite deeply engaged with him when he did his phd on a very original topic etc then after some time there was a young boy called vikram atle he was into this quantum foundation he was obsessed with quantum foundation i said don't get obsessed with do something useful I mean quantum foundation is not a not an area and not certainly for me doing here now directorship of this center but you know then i cooked cooked you know i and he formulated a subject which is not foundation but it had to do with foundation the decoherence theory so you know this quantum the phenomena that classical quantum systems how do they become classical the emergence of classicality in quantum systems this topic always fascinated me because this is a paradox qm suddenly i mean why does classical physics work a quantum is this and quantum physics should work even for macro bodies why doesn't it why, why all the uh, decoherence theory is a satisfactory non philosophical theory other things are too philosophical or god knows what they are and i never got into that so decoherence theory i said well did you did it people had done other thing i said let's go to molecular molecular chemistry i mean molecules actually so we went to molecules and did some decoherence produce people in journal of uh, chemical what is what is that journal come the equivalent of uh, uh, journal of chemical physics yeah journal of chemical physics is the right yeah so i we produced three papers in journal of chemical physics because uh, yeah it was on molecular decoherence etc anyway then i was back to this and i was more into this alternative conceptions etc etc i finally took a student who was in proper physics education research but i took an extremely difficult topic pr never does such difficult topics physics education research generally restricts to some simpler topics of bsc etc uh, but i was by that i had got converted to gr general relativity so i said student conceptions in general relativity let's formulate it again it was a difficult topic i was not sure it will work but it worked and the student got phd etc so this has been my this thing i mean incidentally panse pradhan rajwade and i uh, apart from our academic interaction we form another circle and we meet every 3 4 months or this we used to now it's stopped because of the pandemic we would go to restaurant they would come every months and we would discuss everything under the sun except physics there so we would be discussing all kinds of politics and whatever is going on in the world etc so i think it has been, that was a wonderful interaction this uh, among the study circle students i'll name a few nanal dg prabhu has he come sahana murthy sahana murthy probably is not come she gave a lecture here i want to also mention shekhar devdar he he was going to come but he did not you know, his college meeting stuck him so i still recall nanal in the uh, study circle student she was at that time she looked like even now she looks but she looked like a young collegiate girl you know, sitting quietly at just one one place she was she was always there at one place and coming with unfailing regularity it was not that one day you come is no all years she came with failing regularity and uh, any now she has been doing extremely well and she is in tifr and so on so i'm very proud of her that um, some of my study circles and i'm very proud that some of my study circle students are doing extremely well in their in physics etc etc 
Prabhu has been a very dear friend. I didn't, I, I didn't see him. I thought, I thought he would come, etc. Uh, uh, I would also like to mention my friendship with B. M. Arora. Uh, I have not had direct interaction, but Arora has had lot of in, lot of interest in education, and in that context, we came quite a lot. So, so Professor Arora, thank you, thank you very much. And please forgive me any uh, other omission that I uh, this thing. I close this now with four names, so-called my not my students but my younger uh, colleagues, Savita Ladge, with whom I did chemistry education, uh, produced a book on chemical thermodynamics, and my more recent colleagues. Anvesh, Mashud, and Amog. Amog is not in HBCC, he is in Kansas State, etc. But he was here for some time, etc., etc. And uh, I not only enjoyed the discussions with me, but I also enjoyed the tremendous respect they gave me as a, uh, because of difference of age now, etc. So I am. I'm really fine when I come to come to HVCC. These younger friends of mine are there to take care of me, etc. Uh, but however, it has not been just respect and etc. Last ten years have been very very productive uh, with Savita on this book, and last several years, six seven years, we have been doing this physics epistemology, etc. It has been, I would say, quite a creative phase of my life, uh, so much near the end, in which we have done this epistemology, physics, etc., and produced some nice papers. I think they are worth reading for many, many science education uh, students of, of HBCC. They are, uh, yeah. Now, <coughs> this was all about friendships later, but there are some people who you meet, some friends who are you come across at a young, younger stage, when you are college, etc. When you're more, your interest is more playful and fun rather than studies or anything like that. Although we, we were studious students even in colleges, etc. Vinod Sani, my old Hansaraj college, Buddy, Kalash Rastagi, my a little later, my early TIFF friend Deepan, etc. The other day I, we met at uh, there was some function just one week or not two weeks ago. Yeah, so we met at TIFR. It must have been after. I, I God knows why, with Kailash probably 15, 20 years, uh, uh, we know also after 5, 10 years. It just does not feel that we, it has been so much a period. It is as if we just met yesterday. So that is the great thing with these early friendships. The bonds are so strong that no matter how much is the time, it, the relationships remain the same. There is no formality. I don't care one bit that they have become very distinguished people in their own fields, etc. Nothing, it doesn't matter to me at all. For me, it's Kailash and Vinod of the same old years and, and uh, I have the same affection for them, independent of what they did later in their lives, etc. So, that is really all I, I would like to close. I have uh, talked about everybody. It is not my usual habit, as HBCC people know, to keep, to bring in my own family matters in this thing. I usually keep them away, etc. But I think this is 80 dec decades and probably I am never going to come to, <laughs> never going to, come to this stage again. Uh, Again, okay, uh, here probably my last chance. So, 
I would like to also acknowledge those whom I have always taken for granted. Varsha, my daughter here, and uh, Jitin, her husband, and uh, my son Neeraj, whom, whom Nanal mentioned, who unfortunately he might be, um, I, I don't know, is it a way to see, the, but uh, he might be. He might be there watching. Ahe ka? He is there and his wife Jen. They must have got up early and what this is. And of course, Varsha near it, uh, mother Shobha, who gave me these wonderful two children. So I, I would like to acknowledge them. They have provided me the solid, stable, emotionally fulfilling life without which nothing, nothing would have been possible. Thank you very much.